Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, with me, we got the man with the plan, with the with the hat repping the worst team in the NBA. Whoa. The Los Angeles Pukers. I mean, Clippers. Um, BQ, say what's up to the people. Yo, the Clippers are, are much higher than the Lakers in the standings, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> they might be. They might be. Uh, yeah, the, right. This year, the purple and old is not really uh, doing doing what I would like them to do. But you know what? We got like, you know, 16, 17 of them things hanging in the rafters. And that is enough to hold me over. OK, baby, the uh, a list of all time great Lakers is a list of all time greats of the NBA itself. OK, let me tell you, that makes, something, bro, that makes yeah. you a good impact fan, dude, because you you, you really uh, focus on that history. And that's good enough to just hold you <laughs> over no matter what's currently going on. <laughs> Look, we won it two years ago. We won it two years ago. Come on, man. Come on, man. I know. I know. We uh, we rolled out there in the all senior citizen team this year. You know what uh, I mean? This 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 team would have been fire in two thousand eight. Okay. <laughs> this Lakers team would have been would have been on top of the world, baby. I, I, <sighs> but alas. I just wanna. I just want one championship before I die. That's all. Oh man, listen. Uh, I, I'm a Jets fan in the NFL, and so. Um, I've, I've come to the reality that this may never happen. This just may not be a thing that's in the cards. It's just, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. You know, all right. Fair enough. As a Clippers <laughs> fan, it's just, it, this may never happen. I'm just, <laughs> um, give it to you easy. Um, um, so real quick before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, please like, comment, rate, and subscribe. Hit that like button right now. Hit it right now. Hit it right now. Hit the like button right now okay thank you all for hitting that like button letting everybody know how much you like this video hit the subscribe button if this is your first time here so that you are subscribed uh, to all the great videos that appear on the impact lounge youtube channel hit the notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we drop some fire content on this page on this channel um Happy New Year. By the time you guys are reading this, uh, excuse me, are hearing this, it'll be 2022. And so Happy New Year to everybody out there in uh, Impact Lounge uh, Nation universe. Land, dude. Nation is, uh, so, dude, I'm so glad that, I know Impact Faithful is a thing. I'm so glad they didn't go with Impact Nation because that is the (laughs) laziest, like, shout out to the Impact Fan Nation on Facebook and all that. Like, it's okay for a Facebook group or or something I do, but if you're like a, major wrestling company dude right you know don't don't go don't take the cheap route so i'm glad they didn't do that yeah yeah. um speaking of of cheap route i uh so my you know my my podcast is the talking about pod and i intentionally named my my show the talking about pod because i did i wanted the freedom to talk about like anything i want you know what i mean like if there's like you know a hot topic that's not specifically you know wrestling related if it's TV show like for example this week on the show I talked about um you know one of my favorite shows coming to an end the show called Insecure great great show uh and they did their series finale uh last week and I thought they got it right where so many other great shows have gotten it wrong right so I did a little segment on that um I talked about um this this month uh well this past month December marked the seven-year anniversary of one of my favorite albums 2014 Forest Hills Drive and how that album you know, change J. J. Cole's career trajectory and, you know, all of that. And so, so, so I called it the talking about pod because I wanted to leave it open-ended, but then I look at the number of podcasts that have the word talk or talking or talking in the title. And I was like, oh, basic bitch. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is like the worst possible name I could have came up with for my podcast. But um, um, since I'm mentioning it, um, everybody can click away from this channel right now. Go to the Talking About Pod channel uh, and subscribe over there and uh, show your boy some love on my, my latest drop. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, we were talking about impact because that's why we're here. And BQ, we're going to, you know, do a little a little year end wrap up episode right here. We're going to talk about some of the some of the some current news, but also, you know, some of the biggest things going on. And so what, what's been hot on your mind in the world of impact? So the first thing we got to do is we got to we got to wish Rachel Ellering a 
related <laughs> happy birthday. So that's kind of a funny thing that happened on social media. And we don't know if it was serious or it was a joke or what. Um, as, as much as I, I dog impacts social media game on Twitter, the fact that they wished her a belated happy birthday after that whole thing, I thought was freaking hilarious. She might have not have thought so because she deleted the tweet. So she, she might have been uh, dead serious. I don't mm-hmm. really know. But um, the thumbnail for this video is, is, is Rachel Ellering. So I had to do it in, in honor of her, uh, her birthday. Uh, and I made, I joked on, on Twitter, I sent a tweet, I said, Rachel Ellering wasn't in WWE long enough to qualify for a happy birthday tweet from Impact's social media team. Right. So, <laughs> my, uh, my boy, Adam Thorn- Thornstow from Reno Scum, he, he, uh, he responded underneath, he's like, they missed all three of mine. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta have a certain criteria, dude. They'll, uh, they'll wish consequences creed, uh, happy birthday before they do, uh. Some of the lower, <laughs> the lower part of the card. Um, so I've met Rachel Ellering a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met her at, I went to WrestleMania weekend years ago. Cause I, I went to uh, the, Rachel Ellering also has an only fans, by the way. So if you guys don't know that Rachel Ellering has an only fans go, uh, you know, show her some love, show her some love. Yeah, she got a good mentor in, uh, in, uh, Jordan Grace. Cause Jordan, Yo, Grace is- fact. Jordan Grace, man, Jordan Grace is killing it. I have not subscribed to Jordan Grace's only fans. I listen. I will not be subscribing to these 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 wrestling um, people's OnlyFans. I don't think. I mean, see, Allison K. She's 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 pulling. She's pulling. But <laughs> I'm one of but her I, oldest subscribers, longest. I feel like when you pay for that kind of content, there's an expectation that's weird and, and pay, maybe not fair, but there's an expectation there. And <laughs> and I and if if that's not what they're selling, then I think like. You know, I, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I also don't buy like, I don't buy like eight by tens. I don't buy like any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Like I don't buy autographs, but if, if you're selling like a t-shirt or something, like I'll buy that. Cause it's, it's clear what we're exchanging here. You know what I mean? But don't, uh-huh. don't try to sell me a picture of you uh, bent over tying your shoes in the skimpiest piece of underwear that you own. And then, you know, um, you know, I don't know. What am I going to do with that? You know with a mean? look like, on your face, like, oops, didn't see you there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I, I, I think it's great. I, I enjoy looking at it, but I can't, like, I can't pay you for that. I can't. Well, I, 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 I'm one of Allison K's probably first five followers on Patreon. And then I follow Marty Bell too. Like they're, their content's not like that, dude. There, there's a lot more than yeah. They heard, there's some photo shoots, but it's there. There's a lot more involved for them. Only right. fans, I think, is you know you really got to f- focus on video content, photo content. Like with um, with Patreon, I know they're always running. You know, here's sales on merch, and here's new merch. You get it first. Here, you know, uh, here's a poll. They they share their schedules. You know what I mean? So it's the Patreon game is a little bit different. Right. Uh, but I, but I want to say I've met Rachel Ellering a couple times, uh, and I, I went to WrestleMania weekend years ago because I wanted to go to the Impact Lucha Underground show, which was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made with my money. <laughs> you really and, lament going to that show. <laughs> what was that? Said so you really lament going to that show. <laughs> yeah, I, I I bring this up every so often. I that was the one of the biggest mistakes in my life. Just yeah, the amount of money I spent to go down there. Uh, that and I the mean, Cody WrestleMania neck week tattoo. was great. What was that? <laughs> I said that and the Cody Rhodes neck tattoo. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was like a 17-hour drive or something crazy for me. Like, it, it was – I didn't do it straight. I mean, but uh, it, it was far uh, for me to go to a show that was uh, – everyone was there for Lucha Underground. And, you know, uh, I was like, fuck this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, no, I, I, but I actually wore a Rachel Ellering shirt to WrestleMania weekend that I bought from mm. her – at an indie show in Chicago before. And uh, it was just the shirt I decided to wear. And then um, at, at WrestleCon, is that what, that's what it's called at WrestleMania weekend, right? WrestleCon? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of shows. That's, that's yeah, yeah. certainly so, one of them. Yeah, I was, so I was, walk, I was walking <laughs> around and like we actually, our eyes crossed at the same time. Like she just kind of like looked and then I look, I saw her and she saw my shirt. Like, hey, you know, so right, right. <laughs> we had a cool little moment, but. I've always really liked her, and I tell people look up her match with uh, Tessa Blanchard from, who it was probably like 2015 on um, Sh- uh, Shine. They mm-hmm. had they had a match. The only the only knock I had on it was 
they both were dressed exactly the same. Um, at the time, both looked the same. Uh, <laughs> it was like hard to tell who was who in the match, but, um, right. but yeah, that was, that was, that was one, one, uh, one that I really dug. So, you know, happy birthday to Rachel Ellering. Yeah. Um, so this got messy, right? Like, let's, let's just be honest. Let's call it what it was. This got messy and this was a bad look for impact. Um, <clears throat> It was a bad look for Rachel, too. It wasn't a good look for anybody. Let's be honest. Um, for those of y'all who didn't see, uh, apparently Rachel Ellering's birthday was a few days ago. And Rachel Ellering tweeted, she tweeted at the Impact Wrestling account and said, thanks for the happy birthday shout out. Uh, um, y'all are actually the worst. And I was like, what? I was like, oh, is this a joke? I was like, this is crazy. Um, and then I saw a bunch of people after that, you know, tweet happy birthday under. And my first thought about that was like, Yo, why is it so important to you that the company tweets happy birthday to you? Um, my, my job did not tweet happy birthday to me. I want you guys <laughs> to know my job did not tweet. I work for a very big company and they did not tweet happy birthday to me. So bleep y'all. No, um, but I mean, I, I, I couldn't understand why that was such a big deal. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Maybe this is something that they have done for a lot of other talents. So, you know, like, we, you know, we, we don't know. We can't really judge in that way. But then I saw uh, I saw Gail Kim tweet back at her and Gail Kim basically said, all the girls tweeted you, all the girls texted you. And by the way, we just changed our social media uh, people over, by the way. Thank God. They're, they're like, we, we yeah. just changed our social media people over. And so, you know, everyone is human, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, yo, she basically got publicly reprimanded on Twitter in front of everybody. And I'm like, yo, this is, this is just a bad look. This is a bad, this whole thing should have been handled in private. Gail Kim should have texted her that in private. Um, it, I don't think Rachel Ellering should have tweeted that. I really don't think she should have tweeted that. Like, that's like a complaint. Like, you know, if you're some, um, like a voiceless individual, like a customer of a big brand, right? Like, uh, whenever my Beats products would mess up, I would tweet at Beats, like I would, publicly tweet a picture of my broken beats part product and be like yo y'all gotta do better uh, because you you're publicly putting the pressure on a company that doesn't know you exist it shouldn't be that way for people who work there right like mm -hmm. if, if rachel ellering she works there okay right so um i'm not saying they should know her birthday i'm not saying that but she should be comfortable enough with everyone who's who's worth talking to that she should be able to voice a concern like that. She should be able to pick up a phone and text message whoever she needs to, to, to speak out to about that and say, yo, I didn't get a happy birthday tweet. Like, that's, that's kind of crazy. I'm feeling some type of way about that. She should be comfortable enough with that. So, you know, I don't know if that says something about her. I don't know if that says something about the way the company deals with its talent. Um, but it was like, nobody came out of this looking good. So it wasn't a good look for anybody involved. Um, but what I did think was a good look was Gail Kim mentioning that they recently changed over their social media. Um, because this is something, if you guys have been listening to the show, you know we've been putting pressure on Impact about this. And again, this is a reminder of what I keep telling you. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I tell BQ this in conversations that we have off air and private. Press, okay? Press. If, this, if there's something that you feel strongly about, press. If people don't like it, they're probably going to respond to it. You know what I mean? Like, and, 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 and because people don't like to be criticized, but if you're only telling people what's good, then you're not pushing them to be better. Okay. So hopefully impact social media does get better. Okay. Because we're going to keep talking about it. We're going to keep talking about it. Cause whether you like it or not, we matter. We are the consumer. And yes, we never took a bump. We never got to check out the wrestling business, but we are the consumer. We're the most important people. We're the people who pay that, um, you know, 40 bucks to fight TV every three months for your pay-per-views. And it's only but so many of us left, okay? So, so it's important to criticize the, 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 the people that you invest your time and money in, okay? So shout out to Impact Wrestling for doing a good job, uh, for, for, for changing over their social media. And I'm sure we're not the only people who have said it. OK, but they had to have known that their social media needs to do better in a lot of ways. And so, you know, good on them. In, in my opinion, that's very positive news. And it also, you know, I tweeted this when I saw them tweet that I said, tell me, listen to the cool factor without saying I listen to the cool. factor." 
So give it up for us, ladies and gentlemen. That, that's give it up two, for us. In, in a course of three weeks, two things that we ranted on super hard and there was change within two days. So Boom. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> It, it is a good thing. Uh, to, to wrap up the Rachel, Rachel Ellering thing, I think it does say something about the company a little bit because I promise you they know when Bobby Roode's birthday is. Mm. So, as far as their social media team, I promise yep. you they know that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, uh, but it, it is a super positive thing. So I did an upload on the channel where I was talking about, I was giving them all praises for the way they handled the Jonathan Gresham versus Chris Saban thing where I said, hey, in 30... I, dude, I was just saying this. I, I, I just ranted on this two weeks prior about the Wolves match. And I was like, just say, hey, in 30 minutes, we're going to... and we're, We have a big announcement, you know. That way that you create social chatter and people are waiting. And right, the way right. social media works is, is the quicker you respond to a tweet or a post on social media, uh, the more it organically spreads. Because right. social media has an algorithm that says, okay, people care about this, this message. They care about this tweet. But if the tweet over the first hour gets nothing, it's, it's not going to circulate. You know what I mean? So that's the reason that you do that. Um, you, you know, you create chatter and the algorithm picks up on it. And, and look at the engagement on the tweet. Look at how many people like it. You know, usually they tweet out, Oh, check this out. A hundred people like it. And now you see 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people. You know what I mean? So um, it, it's a good, it, it, you know, I give them a lot of props for that. And then they, they sent out their road schedule, which they never, I mean, granted, they haven't really been on the road, but they've never done anything like that. They've never like, hey, here's the, they put a visual roadmap out from yes. here to, yes. Rebe I think Rebellion is, was the pay-per-view. Yep. They, they put a visual roadmap out and gave people an opportunity to, to it, again, it created social chatter, yep. gave people an opportunity to be like, okay, let me see if I can plan for this. Yep. You know, like, so clearly there's, there's some improvement there. Absolutely. I, I've been talking about their social media for years. I have people who hate me for it, who unfollow me for it, who talk shit, but clearly I know what I'm talking about because now they see that there has to be an improvement. I'm not saying, it, I, I'm not, you know, we're not taking credit for, anything necessarily you know um but i do know we're a voice that, that matters <laughs> no so but we're a voice that matters here I, right. I, I and i know i know that for a fact but right. um you know there's so many people who just want to oh you know you guys point out what they have to fix all the time like yeah we do you know yes they, they don't yes. learn anything from just saying hey this oh man this uh this is a great match here between fucking you know a couple and by the way I, I, I sorry, sorry to, to butt in, but like if you just want to listen to a show that tells you everything that Impact does well and even tells you some things that they don't do well or great, there's those shows are out there. Yeah, okay? they exist. Those shows are out there. Go listen to them, enjoy them, tell them we sent you. Okay. But like, <laughs> but but you gotta, you know, like you again, like that's not just that's just not what you're gonna get here. It's just not what you're gonna get here. You know what I mean? Like. Um, everything's not all sunshines and flowers. And again, if you want it to be better, you got to say something, okay? If your wife makes your favorite dish terribly and you don't tell her, you're going to be eating a terrible version of your favorite food for the rest <laughs> of your life, okay? Right. So like, so you got to, you, you, you got to say something, okay? Like um, Impact Wrestling can do better. Impact Wrestling the company that owns Impact Wrestling bought Access TV from Mark Cuban. Okay, they're not broke, but they need. But 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 if you guys know anything about the way the corporate world works, you any anything you pitch has to make dollars and cents. You got to be able to say, "Hey, turn on the money faucet because I have a plan, and here's the way this plan works, and here's how you're going to make your money back, and here's how we can do this for the cheapest way possible to you." OK, that's what you got to do whenever you want the, the, the company you work for to spend money on anything. OK, so but the money's there. The money is there. OK, they have money. And it, it, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that um, that Scott Demore wants to be able to go to his bosses at Impact and say, hey, look, I'm turning a profit with this company by doing as little as possible, by getting as little as possible from you and, 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 and we're still making money, but like, again, but, but, but to have a plan for growth, you have to show that you can create like a sustainable product to begin with. Like this, I, I am telling you, I know how this works. Okay. Like I, 
I work for a big company. Okay. I've gotten FaceTime with people who made more money than any of us watching this will ever see. Okay. Like this, <laughs> this is how it works. You got to be able to point to the money. Okay. You got to be able to point to the money. So, so right. So for, from, from a social media standpoint, right. Just like you said, something as simple as laying out the touring schedule. What are you doing? You're creating positive buzz. I ranted on this last week or last time. Uh, and, and just something as simple as that, right? Like you got people in Fort Lauderdale. Oh man, pff, yo, this is X, Y, Z amount of time away from me. Let me let me see if I can if I can make this happen. Then you got people wherever else they said they were going. They said they were going to Philly. Where else did they say they were going? Um, uh, I don't even remember. But like, but the point is they laid it out and you just created chatter all the way up through April, right? About your touring schedule, you know, and, and they're putting out graphics, um, hard to kill recently sold out. You know what I mean? And I saw the venue for one of the place, one of the other places that they're going to be. I think the place in Fort Lauderdale and on one of the nights it's already sold out. It looks crazy. And I'm like, yo, good for you impact. This is dope. I am so happy for y'all, man. I am. I am happy for impact. This is great news, okay? Because uh, the Rachel Ellerings and the Jordan Graces and the Trey Miguels and the Mooses and the Josh Alexander, like they deserve to go out there and bust their ass in front of paying customers. They deserve this. And the fans at home deserve who, who are investing. Like I said, who you're giving that $40 to impact every you know three months for their pay-per-views or you're giving that... $5 to impact every month for the YouTube coverage or, or that dollar every month for the YouTube coverage. You deserve that. Okay. You deserve it. Okay. <laughs> like, um, and so, so this is like, we don't ask for much back. Just give us a product that, that is fun. We just want a product that is fun. And so I want to give impact their credit. I want to give them their flowers. They have been doing a great job creating a positive buzz on social media, especially over, I would say the last two weeks. So kudos to impact wrestling y'all have been doing phenomenal keep it up man because we're out here in this social media space and we want fun stuff to talk about with our friends who like wrestling you know what i mean like we're all we're all out here like years ago the iwc used to be a thing but everybody's the iwc now if you consume sure. wrestling you're watching it at least in some part through the internet you're talking with people about it at least in some part through the internet so everything is the iwc now there's no there's there's no iwc because if everything's the iwc then nothing's the iwc okay so um so yeah man like so i mean this, this is this is great though i'm very happy and i'm excited to see what impact has coming up in all these venues i'm i'm excited to see if they can sell you know um i'm excited to see what type of turnouts they get you know what the crowd reactions are like i'm i am very excited for what's to come for impact wrestling and so shout out to them um we've been asking you to do this for a long time thanks <laughs> there's a clear improvement on twitter uh you know i, I would imagine they, they she said there's a turnover i don't know if they're waiting on people i would imagine the people are in place they're just it's just a slow turnover but uh there, there's a clear improvement right away and i it's funny how many messages i actually received this week where people pointed yo pointed out to me Yo, their Facebook page is not even worth my time right now. Uh, their YouTube, aside from the the show that they upload, and you know that the YouTube Insider stuff is the only focus of that channel now. Uh, so that's an area that has to improve, improve too, because you you leave easy money on the table, uh, not having a good YouTube channel, and then uh, you know with their subscriber base, and then uh, you know people are saying Instagram isn't posting shit, you know that. They said Twitter is clearly their only focus at the moment, and maybe they're, you know, maybe they're saying, "Hey, we're gonna uh, come up with a strategy for one platform at a time," because every platform is supposed to have its own separate strategy. It's it's the same overall message, but you approach e each of them differently. And maybe you know the focus is on the the Twitter game right now, which is fine. Uh, I just like to see them improve the other ones because the other ones have better reaches than their Twitter <laughs> account does. Um, you know. Twitter has potential to reach more people, but it hasn't been. Uh, but but the the YouTube can you know that reaches the most amount of people, and that's where they put the least amount of focus on. So you know we'll, we'll see if there's um there's improvements. We brought up Anthem here, and so here's something <laughs> we, we want to talk about a little bit. I, I for the longest time, I, I don't talk about it a whole lot, but I've always thought it in my head. I was like, you know, AEW benefits from having a 
an owner who's a public, a real public figure, someone, you know, he breaks news. He, he understands social media marketing because he does that all the time. Like, hey, you know, big match announcement. And he never disappoints. Uh, at, in the beginning, he used to be like, oh, big announcement. And then it'll be like, oh, we're going to Florida, you know. And people were like, dude, stop doing that. And he, he stopped because <laughs> uh, he was just announcing venues and no one gave a shit. Right, right. Because if they didn't live there, they didn't give a shit. So, uh, but, but I was thinking that in my head for a long time. I was like, wow, AEW really benefits from a from a guy who's who's in the public eye with the wrestling world. Everyone knows who he is. He's um he's breaking news. You know, when I went to Rampage, he came out and talked to the fans. I was like, wow, they're really benefiting from this. And 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 I said, yo, but you know, the guy who runs Impact is a is a a mystery to people. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have social many social media followers. No one's checking for him. No one no one's looking to check Scott uh, not Scott but uh, Ed Norholm's Twitter account to see what's what's going on with impact, what's hot. Like he's not a public figure like that. So for the longest time I was telling myself, man, I just wish they had that, that face, that voice where <clears throat> everyone knows, knows who it is. And people are always talking, people are always talk about Tony Khan, you know what I mean? But then Tony Khan's been making kind of a fool himself, fool of himself on Twitter recently. Uh, there, there's been a, just a few tweets where he's getting involved in stuff and saying stuff that's, unnecessary kind of immature you, you know what i mean like I, I know you know where i'm going with it as far as what happened i think today you know we're recording this on a friday night uh but big swole had tweeted out about i haven't read the article but she was talking about lack of diversity within aew so that's why she left um i'm not a swole fan i never have but she is an air force veteran um which means something to me. She uh, she suffers from Crohn's disease, which my my last relationship that I was with for a real long time mm. uh, has Crohn's disease. Also, I'm very familiar with it. Um, it was a big part of my life for a, a really really long time, and the ex is still we're still good friends. So I still yeah. <clears throat> still part of my life a little bit. But mm. you know it, it's you know if, if there's organizations for Crohn's disease, you know I, I donate money. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking parts in their events. So that means but, something but to Crohn's me. Crohn's so, disease that that can be very debilitating, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I was a little, so I can be a little protective of swole sure. for, <laughs> for those kind of reasons alone. Like as a wrestler, I was never a big fan of hers. I liked her theme song a lot, but you mm. know, she was tweeting out her opinion and then, you know, so I, 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 so, so here's the, here's, here's the deal. So big swole has a podcast and she, um, so I'm uh, let, let, let's let's not let's not do any misquoting here. Let me just go on. Let me pull up the tweets, and let's let's give y'all the real for real uh, with this this whole story right here. Because um, I mean, like we're recording this on uh, New Year's Eve, and um, you know this story really broke tonight and really kind of went crazy. It kind of went crazy, um, but it was this has all been a completely self inflicted wound on the part of Tony Khan. So. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna read to you like this big, big swole on her own podcast was having, <clears throat> was having a conversation with someone and let's see, it says during her call in show, this is, I'm reading from the report on a uh, ringside news, which has actually been, you know, in a lot of places, but you know, you know how these wrestling websites do, they'll just grab something and retweet it and throw it on their own site. So I, I, I saw the tweet from ringside news. So this is the one I'm reading. Um, it says during her call in show, Swole explained why she decided to mutually part ways with All Elite Wrestling. She said that it was an emotional moment when Kenny Omega thanked her for everything she did with, with her feud with Diamante, in her feud with Diamante. This made the women's division more comfortable about pitching ideas. This all led to a final conversation with Tony Khan about her future in AEW. She said, quote, I explained to TK that I didn't want to resign because my peace was being disrupted. If anybody knows me or knows myself, if anything is disrupting your peace, it's time to let it go. Excuse me. It might be uh it, it, it might be it might be scared or be hard, but it's time to let it go. Uh when Kenny said that it was the circle coming to an end because Kenny and I would bump heads sometimes throughout my time at AEW. To end it on that note felt good. It felt wonderful 
to end it at a place where we didn't see eye to eye, but we were there, but there we were, she said. Um, okay, she said they gave her her exit interview and she explained that her heart just wasn't in it anymore. She also said that AEW needs to learn how to take criticism and restructure, but this is the good stuff here. <clears throat> my heart was my heart just stopped being in it uh as the reason why i left aew i felt like there were a lot of things and i told them in my exit interview there were a lot of things that need to change i know fans of the company didn't take criticism well sometimes certain ones uh know this know this uh this is somebody who from the inside the structure is a little off it's fine to be loose but I like to have a little bit more structure. I felt like the women shouldn't have gone through everything they went through just to get on TV or get time. You're signed to this big company. You should get time. All these men are getting time, but the women weren't getting anything or you're not putting people on TV because more people are coming in. Okay. There are more people coming in, but you don't have enough product for all these people. Now you have all these people sitting around having two or three minute matches on dark. That doesn't keep me happy. Shoveling more money at me doesn't keep me happy. We've, we've seen time and time again, especially in a place where there's not enough space. There's no writers in, in, in a sense. Not everyone is comfortable writing their own things. Closed mouths don't get fed. That's exactly what the environment is. If you are shy, and don't know how to write or or not creative, it's not going to work unless they want it to work for you. That's one of their biggest issues, she said. Outside of the lack of structure, their biggest issue, which is diversity. I do not beat around the bush when it comes to diversity and my people. There is no representation truly. And when there is, it doesn't come across as authentic in the black community as genuine. Excuse me, it doesn't come across in the black community as genuine at all. I don't know why everybody is so afraid to accept it or say it, but it's not a good look. What happens is you have this wonderful company that treats people like family, but there is nobody that looks like me that is represented at the top and in the room with them. They are not helping to necessarily influence decisions, but to explain why certain slang and certain words shouldn't be said. There is no one uh, there is no one else who can explain our culture and experience except for us, she said. Um, she said, I knew something is up. All right, then she goes on to talk about her daughter, you know, just was not, a, I, I'll, I'll read this too. She said, I knew something was up when my daughter, who loves watching wrestling, she wouldn't watch AEW all the time and seldomly watch WWE. She was not, a, she's not a big fan unless daddy, Cedric Alexander, was on TV which stopped happening after they botched the Hurt Business. She would say, mommy, there's nobody that looks like me on AEW. There's nobody that looks like daddy. Then she started watching WWE because she saw Bianca Belair and Big E. She saw herself represented. If it wasn't a click, you're absolutely right. If that wasn't a click, you're absolutely right. I don't even have an explanation. It's 2021. Why are people saying it's it, it'll take three years for AEW to have a black champ? This is a scripted sport. It should not take that long. If you have been watching WWE for 50 plus years, then you know what not to do, she said. All right. Um, so that was it in a nutshell. Now we get to the good stuff. So um and folks, we're we're bringing this up not so much, we're not trying to have like AEW dialogue. It's more what I just what I just kind of got into where I was sitting here I'm like, man, I really wish Ed Norholm was this public figure, but we have another it company that's a big public figure. It doesn't always and work out in your uh, in your favor. Looking like a fucking idiot lately, yeah. So Tony Khan read this and his response his response was the top two AEW execs are brown, me and Mega. Jade, Bowens, Caster, Dante, Nyla, Isaiah, and Mark Quinn all won on TV this month. The TBS title tournament has been very diverse. I let Swole's contract expire as I felt her wrestling wasn't good enough. Hashtag AEW Rampage street fight tonight. Okay. <clears throat> so, so much wrong here, right? So much wrong here. Um, and let, let's, let's, let's start with this. So, number one, I, I, I'll, I'll start with this. We can just break this tweet down piece by piece. The top two execs are Brown, me and Mega. Um, 
this, well, I'll, I'll come back to that. Then the next part was Jade, Bowen, Dante, Nyla, Isaiah, Mark Quinn, all went on TV this month. If you can count the number of black people who have won on your TV shows in a month, you're not doing a good job. That's not <laughs> positive diversity, stupid. That doesn't, it, it, you, you could name them all in one tweet. And by the way, I was having this conversation with somebody else the other day, I think just the, just the night before last, because um, I, I, I had been thinking about this for a couple of days. And so I tweeted out, when's the last time a black talent won on AEW TV? You know, like not AEW Dark, but, um, and somebody was, was tweeting that, but they were like, well, you know, uh, Private Party won tonight. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Private Party was two people in a five-man team that won a match, and they didn't get the pin, okay? So, like, you know, oh, and, um, and, and Dante Martin was one of two people to win a Battle Royal, a Battle Royal, which, by the way, just set him up to be fed to MJF, MJF in Long Island the following week. Like, give me a break, man. Give me a break. Like, again, if you can count them all in one, it's like saying, it's like naming how many black friends you have, right? It's like naming how many, it's like naming how many black people have been to your house. Okay. Just for anybody out there listening to that, if you ever want to defend yourself as not being prejudiced by naming the three black people who have been to your house in three years, that's not a good look. That's not a good look. Okay. It just, it just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And so then he follows that up by saying, uh, the top two AEW execs are Brown, me, and Mega. And so this is very important. This is very important because another way that people try to deflect um, conversations about diversity, in, specific, in particular, like anti-Blackness, right? Like that's what we're really talking about. We're talking about like anti-Blackness is they try to go all POC, POC meaning person of color. And they try to group in everything as ways of diversity, Okay. So let me let me just explain this for anyone listening, and, and this is this is a a a, uh, a teaching moment. Okay, this is a teaching moment. The way white supremacy works, you have to have a top and a bottom, right? And the way this works, everyone knows white people are at the top of the order, black people are at the bottom of the order, and people who come to this country from all over the world understand this, and it's okay. It, it fit, as long as you fit in the middle and you don't fall to the bottom, it's perfectly fine, okay? So people from all over the world of countries, uh, uh, okay, Brian, you're, you're Puerto Rican, right? Yeah. Okay, you're a Puerto Rican, and Puerto Rican, there's light-skinned Puerto Ricans, there's dark-skinned Puerto Ricans, right? Like, all of that, right? Would you, or, and, and I don't, this is not like a gotcha question, just Give me an honest answer because I all, I feel like I already know the answer, but I'm just going to, you know, we're having a personal conversation in front of our fans here. Uh, would you or, 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 or anyone who's also Puerto Rican that looks like you ever mark on a census that they're black? Um, yeah. That look like me? Yes. No. Like right? me? No. No, no. no. There it, are Puerto Ricans thing. who do. It's, 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 I know, but they're dark skinned, aren't they? Yeah, because we're, we actually have a, a small percentage of African American in us. It's right. Yeah, that... I, 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 I know, I know. Okay. Yeah. But the thing, but the, but the point is, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that because, and again, this is just, this is just a, a, a teaching moment here for, for everyone listening. There's political protections that come along with whiteness in this country. Okay. And so, no one wants to be on the bottom of that racial ladder, okay? So the, 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 the theme is anti-Blackness. It is what it is. As long as you, you can always feel good about wherever you stand, wherever you fall in that, because you know you're not at the bottom, right? And so why does this matter? Because Tony Khan is uh, of a brown people. He's of a brown people, but he would never, like, like any other race of any people who come from any other country, come to this country, he would never mark Black on a census. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't look black, but I bet you, I bet you he'd mark white. I bet you he'd mark white if given the opportunity. I bet you. Okay. Because there's, there's, again, like I said, there's political protections that come along with that. I'm just trying to get everyone here to understand what the basic basis are of, of anti-blackness. That is, that is the basis of what we call racism in America. Okay. So, so, um, so to, to try and minimize a conversation that a black woman is having about 
diversity by saying, oh, we got other brown people here. We got other brown people here. And by the way, some other black people have kind of won on TV in the last month. Like it just, it, 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 it was a stupid comment. It shouldn't have been said. He could he could have said nothing at all. I'll say the same thing that I said when Tony when Tommy Dreamer made his comments about Ric Flair on uh, about the dark side of the ring. Shutting the fuck up is free. You didn't have to say anything. You didn't have to say anything, Tony Khan. You didn't have to say anything at all. But instead, you said something stupid, and you're taking a beating for it, and you deserve it. And I hope the beating continues long after this this uh this this day is over. Um, because again, like it, all she did was, was she was very complimentary when, when I read what she said on her podcast, did she disparage anybody in AEW? Did she say no, anything no. bad about the, about the organization? Did she say anything bad about anybody who works there? People say worse things about impact when, when they leave. That's what I'm saying. She didn't say yeah. anything bad about the organization. She just talked about the, um, you know, the, the, that, the, that they have a problem with diversity. And they need to do better at that. And he came back like the, the internet troll that he is, like the, the whiny little rich boy that he is. And he came back and attacked her. And it made him look absolutely terrible. It made him look terrible. There's no win for this, for you in this, Tony Khan. None whatsoever, okay? There, there's no win for this. That was a stupid comment. You shouldn't have said it. You shouldn't have said anything at all. Um, but... um. Yeah, man. Oh, by the way, BQ, it's 12 a.m. Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Oh, happy New Year. I still got an hour to go, but yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, happy New Year to you, though. Yeah. Get, get to you. There. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, like, so, yes, to, to bring this full circle, it's not always a good thing to have your the, the head of your company uh, out on front street tweeting and getting in the mix with everybody because Tony Khan is taking a severe beating right now, which he has absolutely earned. It's self-inflicted and he deserves whatever is coming to him. And I want to, I want to, I want to transition here just a little bit. Um, I think by the way, that Tony Khan has opened yet another door for impact wrestling. Okay. He opened the forbidden door to let Kenny Omega through. I think he's opening a door right now. And that door that he's opening, he's opening a door for Impact Wrestling to be a company that really, really markets itself towards female fans and towards Black fans or fans of color. You know what I mean? Because, and again, like for anybody, because I know so many people hear, hear these things and their natural instinct is to repel or get offended because, you know, people, people seem to think anything that sounds you know, positive for black is negative towards anyone who's not black. And that's a you problem, right? Like it's, it's, it's not, um, yeah, that's not what's being said. It's, it's right, right, right. Like it's that, that's not like, that's not anybody like attacking you to say, Hey, you know, there's a fan base, there's a market out there, right? Remember when Alberto Del Rio was, when they kept giving him every shot in the world in WWE, right? That was intentional. You're right. Like, yo, there's a huge Latino market out there. We gotta, we gotta get this money. You know I mean? Mahal. We gotta get this money. Say, say exactly. We gotta get this money. Okay, like it's not unintentional. Hulk Hogan. Okay, like the John Cena. Like you know what I mean? Like you know, like so. It, so nothing is unintentional in the world of television. Everything you put on TV is designed to reach a target audience. That's very intentional. It's not a mistake. That at last year's WrestleMania, and by the way, this is my favorite moment of the whole show. Well, before the match starts with uh, Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, Michael Cole said into the microphone on their biggest show of the year, this is the first time that two black women are main eventing a WrestleMania. He had alluded to the history that was going to be taking place uh, in, leading up to that match. But at the beginning of that match, he said it bluntly openly and directed and that's a time stamp that will live in my brain and millions of other people's brains forever that's intentional everything on tv is intentional okay it's intentional why aew puts why all the all the women on aew damn near look the same i saw a match tonight with ty conti anna j uh uh, uh ali and um penelope ford they all look the fucking same, okay? <laughs> like, that's not unintentional. Everything they're selling you is intentional. So I said that just for anybody who is, you know, getting their panties in a bunch about the idea of I'm saying that 
you know, the door is open for Impact to really, really, really push and elevate some Black talent in some feature spaces because there's a whole community out there that feels rejected and neglected by the likes of Tony Khan. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm just saying, man, and I actually tweeted this to Scott Demore. you better get out here and get this money. Hell yeah, man. Um, you're right. Everything is, um, what's the word? I forgot the word you already said was, but it is intentional. Everything is intentional. Intentional. Uh, and, and Impact, NBA, Impact has done a good job of, it doesn't matter who you are, what, what uh, you know, white, black, red, yellow, doesn't matter if you're male, female, like they'll, they'll push you, you know? Uh, the, if you're talented enough, the, you know, they also look at a wrestler's background, what company you come from, this and this, that's probably a, right. you know, they could work on that. <laughs> the but biggest as far thing as, is if you worked in WWE, that's it. Yeah. That's but, but as far as like what, you know, the talent you have in front of you, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know, where you're from. And they've, uh, they've done an excellent job with that. Oh, so let's talk real quick, mm-hmm. kind of in the vein of AEW, Mercedes Martinez popped up there. And of course everyone started, you know, in Twitter. Oh, I, I thought she was with impact and, I never thought she was with Impact, but um, the crazy thing is that well, she did some, make some comments like, I wouldn't mind being here, but it, it clearly didn't work out. But it was like, they do the knockouts knockdown. She goes over several Impact talents, uh, y- you know, didn't do anything for anybody in, 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 that, in, in a sense. I mean, I guess Tasha Steele's look good, but, you know, it was, it was like all for the sake of having a kind of going for a cheap headline. Like here's, you know, former WWE person versus former WWE person for the knockouts championship. Neither of them were with the company, right, right. Um, you know, and then here we are a month later and it's like, and then the knockouts knockdown was a phenomenal show, but it's like, okay, so it's over. What, what came out, what came of it? You know, the, the headline was Mercedes Martinez wins. Not even a contract. That, like, imagine do a Lady Frost won that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you can build off that. You can do something with it. But instead, it's like, okay, this person, because of her name, because if she wasn't Mercedes Martinez of formerly of NXT, she would not have won this. She wouldn't even have been invited. You know what I mean? Despite everything she's done with Shine and all that, she wouldn't even have been invited. You know, so um, you got any thoughts on that with, you know, with her? Well, I um, <clears throat> I think you nailed it, man. To be perfectly honest with you, I think that um, I think I think you're right. Like you know, uh, Mercedes Martinez, you know, d- despite her excellent resume, her excellent skills in the ring, um, she, I, you know, I remember watching the original May Young Classic and being like annoyed that you know people like Mercedes Martinez and Mia Yim were working to put over Shayna Baszler because I was like, oh, she's just Ronda Rousey's friend, ah what she was but still but Shayna Baszler has also gotten really really good at wrestling so you know what I mean like it's not like so I, but I remember that's what I was thinking at the time um and Mercedes Martinez like again you know very skilled man very skilled um you know great character you know she definitely comes off as like an ass kicker you know uh you know a mean bully type of person and yeah I mean I could definitely see Impact wanting to use her but also I think her biggest asset in their eyes was the fact that she was recently off of WWE TV. And, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, you know, like you were saying, I think that, you know, no, <laughs> that's the, the, the biggest thing that will make impact wrestling push you no matter what is if you are a former WWE talent, then they are, you know, just much more likely to want to put you on their TV. I don't know why it's that way, but it is that way. Yeah. So, you know, it would have been cool, but a lot of people wanted to see her hard to kill in, in the um, – people assumed she was going to be in that match in the Knockouts Ultimate X. She actually would have been perfect for it. Maybe they wanted her to, um, but clearly there's um, there's an issue with negotiations mm. when it comes to these free agents. I was listening to an, inter- to an interview with KM, Kevin Matthews, a uh, podcast mm-hmm. he did with Wrestle- Wrestling Inc. Wrestle Inc. Wrestling Inc. What is it? Wrestling Inc. Yeah. I think it's wrestling with Nick Hausman, who I fucking hate. Um <laughs> You blocked me on Twitter a long time ago because I just went in on this dude for the longest time. But so he did an interview with him, and he was. Are you familiar with when him and Scott Newmore were going back and forth on Twitter? I'm not. No. Oh, so there was there was this whole thing back when the, the Impact was doing the Twitch shows and all this shit, and um, KM was just you know he kind of he was going at it with Scott, which I guess they're pretty cool in real life, but they got into a spat where you know KM was like you're just piggybacking you know, your, your uh, strategies of p- piggyback off 
successful independent promotions and do your, you know, call the impact, you know, call them shows your own, you know, and so just right. I'm fully paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly what was being said, but he made a comment too. He was just like, when I left impact, which, and to my knowledge, he's, he's on good terms with everyone there, but he was also, so when I left, he was like, I was going to tapings and doing very little for very little pay and it wasn't worth it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would say, hey, what do you got for me this week? Well, we, we don't know, but just show up, you know? And he goes, so all it, all it was was just me showing up to do nothing and to not really get paid. He's like, and then Scott, you know, I brought that up, something about the pay, and Scott responded, said, oh, dude, we, we doubled your indie rate. And he was, and, and KM said, so if you're trying to be in the same vein as WWE and AEW, he's like, why are you paying people their indie rate? Or being right. proud that you're paying them a little over their indie rate. He's like, you're either a big time promotion or you're an independent promotion. Which one is it? Right. You know what I'm saying? So we always talk about dude, the company has money. Obviously, they can't spend in a way where they're going to be in the red. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, absolutely. But it just seems like these negotiations with free agents who have options aren't going well. It seems right. like they, they, for the most part, can lock you down if you're, you know, um, we, we kind of talked about Zicky Dice on here where he publicly mm-hmm. was like, hey, I want to go to AEW, and they didn't weren't interested. He did one match right. they as a tryout. They weren't interested. Right. So, in fact, was able to sign him, but he didn't have another option. You know what I mean? Right. And, um, exactly. Not to say he's not talented or not, not good at what he does or not funny or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying the bid, they're, there's, they're losing the bidding wars. You know, mm. I don't think there's one where they really legitimately – won a, a bidding war for someone. The only person I could even say is a possibility is perhaps Deanna Perrazzo because yeah. you'd have to believe AEW was trying to get her. Yeah, I expected her to go there, and then she ended up in Impact. But, you know, you know guys like Jonah, he, he's not signed with Impact. Yeah. You know, he's doing a, new, new Japan stuff, but he talked to them too, and something didn't work out, so now we see him on Impact. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, same guy, Matt Cardona, like he... He publicly said, hey, I hope to stay here. It didn't work out. And then he appears on Impact after that. You know what I mean? So right. it just seems like there's there's something within these negotiation processes that that's just breaking down. We, you know, there was the the Bray Wyatt and the Braun Strowman, all these rumors and stuff like that, but they don't come to fruition. There's there's the talks are happening, but mm-hmm. just just not coming to fruition. You know what I mean? So I don't know if they have to seriously look at a way to restructure how can we make this um this contract more more favorable to a wrestler because they used to be able to say hey we're not we can't pay you full-time pay but we can pay you well for a part-time schedule and then right. you can do what you want to do with because there's a lot of wrestlers who well i have other projects i want to do i want to start this company i want to do mm-hmm. this and this and we know we talk about the only fans we want to do the twitch it opens up a world um for you to be able to do all those things Right, and monetize yourself in a way that you can't work. You can't do working for WWE. You can't monetize right. yourself, and and you know, then you know they can do a YouTube channel. They can they can do this and this. But now AEW almost offers the same because they're st- they for the most part offer a part time schedule. Like it's it's changing now because they have dark, and they're you know doing. I think they're doing pay per views a little more frequently than they were. I, I don't know. It's about the same. But you know they have they have dark now. And they have dark elevation and the days are longer because they have to do the elevation and they have rampage now. And now, so now it's not just one day a week, like it used to be, mm-hmm. but it's still comparable. It's still a part-time schedule in comparison to like WWE. Right. You know, so. I mean, um, yeah. And I think, listen, what it comes down to, right. It has to be that they're low ball, right? Like, I mean, like when we're talking negotiations, like, you know, the only thing that makes you walk away from negotiations is if it's not worth it, right? Like if it's, if it's not worth what you feel like you're worth, then you're going to walk away. Right. I mean, I think that's what just about any, any negotiation is like, if the, you know, depending on how desperate you are, right. Like um, that, that's just, that's, that's all that is. Right. Like if you don't, um, if, if, if you can, if they're offering something that's not worth your time, not worth the bumps, then you're going to walk away. Like it really is that simple. You know what I mean? Like it really is that simple. And so um, impact has to be lowballing people. Right. Like there's there's no other way around it. And so um, just like you said, if people have options, then they're telling impact to kick rocks. 
And yeah. so, um, and so the rocks are getting kicked <laughs> and here we are, you know, like, I, I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot to that. You know what I mean? Someone, is it, is it that you feel like they should be paying more for talent? Now, listen, I feel like they should. Okay. You got to justify it. Again, we talked earlier about this whole thing. If you're Scott Demore, you have to have a plan and your plan has to include a, a budget. Right, like we're, which is to say, we're not gonna go over this amount of spending. Right, um, of course. And, He's a businessman; he understands that. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right, and so, so, so you have a budget, and you're trying not to go over that budget now. But you also, as a general manager, right, you have to leave some wiggle room, right? So you might be, you might, you, 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 you're not gonna go just all the way up to your budget. Budget, you're going to leave some wiggle room because what if? John Cena has a falling out with Vince McMahon. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what if you know some 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 big star becomes available? You gotta keep you gotta keep that that rainy day that nest egg. You know what if Skyway Studios gets flooded? You know what I mean? Like anything, you gotta keep a little cushion. So I said on it just to say that if 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 um, Anthem says, "Hey, Impact, you got five million dollars to run your product this year," then you're probably not gonna spend five million dollars, right? You're probably gonna spend four or three and a half if you can right you know whatever i i've never run a wrestling company so i don't know what would be the bare minimum you could spend but that's uh, again this goes back to television right like the whole purpose of television is to put on uh the the best looking show you can for as cheaply as you can um again unless once you get into like wwe's stratosphere they're making so much money from their tv deals you know, the streaming deals with Peacock and, you know, all of that and the, 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 the Saudi Arabian blood money, like they're making so much money from that stuff. They can do stuff that no other wrestling company can do, right? Like when they built that Thunderdome thing, uh, they basically rented out Tropicana Field during the, the pandemic. They're like, hey, baseball, you're not playing here? Okay, we're going to rent out your whole infield or outfield and we're going to... Uh, build a wrestling dome here and we're going to fill it with tv screens and fireworks and all this other shit and you know we're just gonna we're gonna post up here for a few months and because they can afford to do that Mm -hmm. but like that's different right that's different um you know a a company like impact you got to stay under budget so that's i said just to say that like as much as i would like them to get these wrestlers under exclusive contracts where you can only see a Deanna Perrazzo versus Thunder Rosa match in Impact. As much as I would love that to be the case, like Impact would have to pay them so much more to keep them exclusive. Like if you remember when Killer Cross was beefing with Impact, he was upset. He was insulted because he told them he wanted to make more money, and they told him, you know, uh, again for lack of a better uh, of a better phrase, okay, go work some indie shows because we, you know, we free you up. We only, we only uh, use you two weeks a year. You know, that's, that's another 14 days. You can be working indie shows, go make that money. You know what I mean? He was insulted by that. Um, But that, but that's the way that they try to keep this profitable for the wrestlers. But I I think it kills impacts ability to put on, uh, you know, exclusive content. And so, um, yeah, but like I said, that's, I think, I think that's, that's what it is. Like they don't pay them more. They can't lock them down to exclusive deals. And that's what the wrestlers want, right? Yeah. Like the, the wrestlers want to be paid so much that they don't have to work indie shows. Why would you go take bumps from Joe the Plumber, who just got out of wrestling school, you know what I mean, <laughs> when you could be working with a world-class performer? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. um, so, so I, I think that's it. I think that's the answer. You know, like they, they don't get these guys because they can't pay them exclusive contract money. And so, yeah, I think that's it. I got fireworks going on behind me here for New Year's, so sorry if you guys can hear that with the, re- uh, the recording. We got fireworks going on in this podcast, baby. <laughs> Boom! You know this. You know this. <laughs> um, so yeah, everything you said is correct, and and it's not. I, I'm not personally knocking that strategy of paying people because that's that's what's realistic. Um, but you know, you if you look at sports, uh, the the you know the reason a lot of, especially in the NBA a lot of players want to go play for big market teams is because oftentimes they have an owner who's willing to spend money because the teams are more profitable. Like, and I'm not trying to knock your Lakers, dude. They're one of the worst run organizations in, in the league, but they print money. 
So the, the owners are saying, okay, we'll go in the luxury tax. We'll do this and this. You know, a team like the Warriors, not necessarily a huge market, but it's pretty close. They're, they're, he spends money. Uh, you know, the Cavaliers, it's a small market, and it's not a desirable location, but they have the second ri- richest owner behind Steve Ballmer in the NBA. So he got, he got him the championship. The Warriors got a championship. The Lakers got a championship like the, because the owners are willing to – Spent and Jeannie Buss, you know, you know, people were so offended when, uh, you know, Paramount picked up women's arrest, women are wrestling, and people thought they should have picked up Impact. Well, their owner is willing to spend and and pay the people, you know, to make to to, they're willing to spend the money necessary to put on a good product. Um, I think I I do think Impact's way of spending is very conservative, and that's okay. That, that we're not saying hey, spend money you don't have. But that's why I always talk about the YouTube channel is that um, there's an app I have that uh, um, I was able to track an estimate that the impact makes about a million dollars off YouTube a year. Oh, nice, and that's nice. off posting some bullshit fucking clips that no one right, cares right. about. Imagine some real engaging content one day a week that the actual subscribers care about. Right, Dude, you right. can double that money and you can pay. Be- like, that's why I always say you're leaving money on the table with YouTube. Because there's yeah, all yeah. these other deals. You, we got to get these TV deals and these streaming deals so we can make more money. Like, YouTube is more money. All you have to do is mm-hmm. give a shit. And you can go, go out there and pay people. So, um, you know, that that's the whole point. It's not, we're not saying impact structure is wrong or broken, but they're, yeah, we're going on real long rants about this opening <laughs> stuff. Um, not saying it's wrong, but it's, when people. you know, a lot of fans get really offended. Well, why, how come they didn't? They couldn't sign this person. Why didn't this person sign? Well, it just because it is exactly what you said. They want, they don't want to wrestle the indie shows. They want, you know, right. full time crowd. So that's why the, the Moose is the Eddie Edwards. They got no problem resigning because they're, you know, they're signing mm-hmm. salary deals. You mm-hmm. know, like it's, right. it, there are some guys getting those deals and some, right. maybe some girls too. I, I don't know, but, you know, um, it's, it's going to be yeah, very yeah. difficult for them to get these free agents. It just, just is. You know, unless you're somebody like, you know, a Braun Strowman, right, who comes in and like, I'm pretty sure that like, I'm pretty sure his asking price was just very high. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure his asking price was very high. And I'm sure they probably were going back and forth. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, a good negotiator doesn't have it all happen in one conversation, you know, several conversations back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They're really trying to wear you down and make you think about it and yada, yada, yada. But ultimately, they couldn't come to a number, but that's because Braun Strowman was being very deliberate about what his value is, right? He was like, all right, you know, yeah, that 50% below what I'm asking for, oh, it does sound good, but no thanks, right? And if you're willing to walk away, then so be it, right? So be it. So um, yeah, you know, I think that's what it all comes down to, man, honestly. Like, remember the skits they were doing where Heath was negotiating with Scott Demore? I'd be willing to bet that those are actually a pretty good glimpse <laughs> into, like, negotiating yeah. with Scott Demore, right? Yeah. It's just like, like, nothing you ask for, like, you know, it is it, always a talk around, you know what I mean? Like, there's no, you know, coming back to what you want, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, I totally agreed. Um I had one more point I was going to make and I totally forgot, forgot what it was, but Oh no, there are some wrestlers that do, uh, that do value the fact that, you know, you get on with impact and maybe you're not making life changing money, but the, the, you do get that extra exposure and now you're getting extra indie dates. Right. Um, and, and you stay busy because of that. I know. So I know for a fact that there's certain dudes, like I, I'm, I have a busier schedule now because I'm involved with impact. So there is a benefit but, right, but right. that's for that certain tier of wrestler that is still trying to get their name out there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and I think, like, again, it's all about, like, how you look at things, right? Like, I've said before that I think Impact is a uh, developmental promotion, right? Like, I mean, people go there to develop, to get their value up in the hopes they can go get paid somewhere else. Um, and, you know, there's a few people who... Um, who can go out and get paid other places right now and those are the people who um you know who 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 get paid right but it is what it is if you have like the mindset where you're like all right hey look i'm trying to work as much as i can right now get my skills up um in the hopes to one day land in nxt then like honestly you're the perfect person for impact you're the perfect person for impact because 
you, you know, you know, you're going to make, you know, not, not, you're not going to make a uh, great money, but you're going to learn how to work on TV. You're going to be freed up to work any dates, work with more people, do get more exposure, like all of that stuff. Like, again, um, you, you can't stay enough. We're going to get to this later, but like Deanna Perrazzo, man, like the amount of hustle she's been doing, bro. Like you got to give her her credit. You know what I mean? She's taking that freedom and going anywhere and everywhere. And so, yeah. like you said, if you're the type of person who is willing to, um, to, to, to work as much as you possibly can, then you're going to love it. You know what I mean? Like you're going to love working for impact because it's going to be a really great chance for you to grow. But if you, if, if you're like, Oh, Hey, um, I'm wrestling on TV for a nationally, a national brand, uh, I should be taken care of at this point, then you're going to hate it because <laughs> they're right. not going to pay you. You don't have that value, the same value you would have if you were coming from WWE TV. It is that's what why, it is. That's why I think they have to put a real emphasis on like we're we're building tomorrow's stars because if, if you keep trying to say, hey, we're trying to sign people, you know, I know the big slam anniversary marketing scheme now is who, are, what free agents are we going to sign that were released from WWE? Um, if that's what you want to do, you you have to find a way to compete financially. And, and that's why I'm saying there's some people who benefit from just the, from the exposure, even if it's a smaller exposure, but so, so you got to find out those, find those people and create, create tomorrow's stars instead of trying to go out there and we're, we're trying to sign these main eventers from another company, but we're not going to, you know, offer them what they need. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, their structure is better for we're we're trying to find the new talent out there, the new fresh talent, you know, right. but um, let, let's move on here and talk about um, real quick. We, we mentioned social media wise, they tweeted out, tweeted out the road schedule. The, the taping schedule is, is a little, is, is more frequent. You know, there's some nights where they're only taping one, they're doing like the pay-per-view or an impact plus show. And then one night of tapings and that's it. Like it's more of a, it's more frequent than what they've been doing before. Remember with, under Dixie and all that, it was, you know, sometimes they, they were recording, you know, five, six days straight. The wrestlers didn't show back for back up for work for three months, yeah. you know, and now they're, now they have the report for duty every month. Uh, but now there's, there's some months there where they're, there's two, mm -hmm. they're showing up twice. So yeah. Yeah. that tells us too, that for lo them to logistically do that, it has to make financial sense. So that me, you have to believe they're in a healthier place financially. You know, we're, I know we're talking money here and we don't want to make it sound like we're acting like the company's broke. We always, we right, always like, say right. they're not. Also, but, we don't claim to know their books, right? We don't claim, right. we're just going by what we see. We're putting, um, you know, we're, we're going one plus two equals three, you know? Right. I said one plus one equals three for a second. I was like, yeah, we really don't need to be talking about numbers. Um, <laughs> but uh, any thoughts on that real quick? Um, we're, and we're going to talk about some of our schedule? end of the year stuff here, but what's that? About the taping schedule? Yeah, the tape is just the frequency of it. Like, it's a very different format so, than what they've been doing before. Right. I was, so, okay. So, my, 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 the thing I loved, I remember what, what I called, you know, I think most people would agree with this who followed this company. The peak of, of TNA was 2013, right? Um, and, and, and they were, they were touring like up to a point. They were, you know, they had a nice mix of, We'll be in the impact zone for a few weeks. Then we'll go on the road for two months. You know what I mean? That type of stuff, which I think is like a great mix. To me, the, the perfect impact schedule would be if you go somewhere, like let's say you're going to Fort Lauderdale, tape two weeks of TV, and then you're back on the road in two weeks. I would love to see that. You know what I mean? Because, it's, because I feel like it keeps it fresh. You give me Monday Night Raw used to do that. They used to, but Monday Monday Night Raw was also a one hour show, so that's where yeah. that's where you get people, and that's where I was I was groaning a little bit looking at this taping schedule because it you know it, it's like it's like two nights here and then like a month later somewhere else. So that tells me that you're going to be taping two episodes of a two hour television two nights in a row, and I'm like, yo, you're going to burn the crowd out. Like, just do. Do, you know, do one taping each night or something like that. You know, just to, I, I feel like if you could make it a little more infrequent, again, I know it would cost more money, but I think it would keep the show a little more lively feeling. Um, like if people were, 
if it was like this show is live every other week as opposed to this show is live you know once every three weeks I feel like it'll be not live but like again like we taped on Sunday and it's airing on Thursday right like that's 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 very current like we're in the same week right like um don't like uh don't show me on like social media Eddie Edwards has a fresh haircut and then on the show tonight his hair looks shaggy you know what yeah. I'm saying like, <laughs> you know um, yeah so so I would I'd like to see the, the the taping schedule be a little more frequent. Like I said, I think the dream, what, what I think would be a perfect scenario is like I said, if you go to, if, if you're in, um, if you're in Fort Lauderdale on, on, on the eighth and the ninth, then, you know, tape for the eighth and then tape a next episode for the next week. Uh, and then the week after that, you're back taping another fresh episode. That's what I would like to see. Um, but what we're seeing is, as far as the taping schedule, like it's, let's say they're Fort Lauderdale on the 8th and the 9th. Well, they're taping four weeks of TV in those two days. And I, I, what I don't like about it is this, is again, you're asking for two nights. So you're asking either the same people to come out two nights in a row or hoping for a different crowd two nights in a row, which is, a, you know, a real crap shoot, right? Um, and then you're asking them to sit for two tapings. So that means you're going to have episodes where like each episode progressively, the energy is going to go down. Unless, yeah, we we'll see that. You, right. Unless oh, you are yeah. really finding ways to keep it fresh, you know, in between tapings and starting off the next night with a big bang. Like you got to find some ways to really get creative to keep the juice in these audiences for these episodes you're taping. Like it's doable. It's doable. But when I look at that schedule, it makes me a little worried that that's what we're going to see. We're going to see like, okay, week one, great energy. Week two, way down. Week three, crowd's a little spotty. Uh, week four, energy's way down. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's kind of, of, of what we're going to see here. But I really hope not. You know, I really hope not. I hope that they, you know, just put everything they can into keeping that crowd loud and active. And if you're somebody listening to this who is going to be at those shows, give it all you got, baby. Because us at home, we're dependent on you, okay? <laughs> we, we, we love with a passion to watch shows on TV where the crowd is loud and active and yelling at everybody, booing the bad guys. Boo Deanna Perrazzo, especially. Boo. Boo you, <laughs> Deanna Perrazzo. Boo you. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Like, like, So yeah, if you're listening to this show and you are going to any of those tapings, man, let them have it. Give it your all. You know, enjoy it. Have a ball. You know what I mean? Because for everybody out there, who's watching at home, including myself, you know what I mean? Like that crowd energy really makes the show, man. It really makes the show. We saw that with Orlando where, you know, that first, we were always really excited for that first day of tapings when it aired because there was some energy in the crowd. Yes. And by the end, it was like an absolute ghost town. You know, they had a lot of the same people showing up. I was watching AEW Dark for the first time the other day since they moved to the old impact zone. And it's funny to see the setup. It's <laughs> right. You, know, you can tell that's where exactly. So, um, so we're going to get into some end of year. I, we can say awards. That's not really where we're going with it. We're not trying to say who was your wrestler of the year. We're, we're going to. We'll call them superlatives. Yeah, Maybe there we go. Superlatives. <laughs> yeah, we're going to handle a little bit different, but <laughs> but let's 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 talk about this at first because um, you've watched the last two episodes. I haven't. I. Take a, mm. I take the month off from Impact in December. Uh, nice. Didn't watch Throwback Throwdown. Didn't watch these best of. I don't. I don't care. I never have. So, but you watched them. So, what was your kind of like takeaway from the, you know, the best of? Um. So for me, my biggest takeaway was I think this this year's best of Impact episodes were a great reminder of the whole reason you do these episodes and that's to remind people of the great year that you had and watching these episodes honestly to me it really did refresh me and it reminded me that impact had a phenomenal in-ring year not a good year impact had a phenomenal in-ring year like from 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 getting fans back to uh the 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 forbidden door stuff um the matches Josh Alexander was having like impact had a, the motor city machine guns coming back, having those matches like impact had a really, really great in ring year, man. And I think that again, because 
they do not do a good job of keeping themselves looking and sounding exciting on on online in the social media space that we all consume so much you can forget that impact was lit impact had a great year like in ring just if you have anybody who's a wrestling fan just sit down and watch some of that stuff you're like oh this was good this was a good year you know that don't get me wrong empty arena wrestling was terrible but impact wrestling did empty arena wrestling as good as anybody you know what I mean? So, uh, well, AEW, when they had the people around the ring, that made it much better. But, I mean, it's just like I said, when it, when all things were equal for, I would say, probably the, uh, the first month or two, when nobody had anybody around the ring, Impact's product looked just as good as everybody else's. I can agree um, with that. And so, um, so, yeah, man, like, Impact had a really good in-ring year. And, um, like I said, these these if you haven't seen uh, the shows, just go back, you know, look at them. They're on the YouTube Insider. Um, they're also on the impact plus app. Um, and you can just, yeah, like I said, just go back and watch. It's just a really nice refresher of the year that they had. And if you watch this past episode all the way to the end, there was a big announcement. Did you see the big announcement? No, no idea. Too young is pregnant. The, like, uh, I did or, see, I saw that segment. The, I was like, the Ooh. artist who plays too young is pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like real pregnant. <laughs> like, um, and uh, I thought it was really cool because we were saying, like, why Sue Young not been on TV, all the other stuff. And, like, there was our answer. Um, so I, I think she killed Brandy Lauren and, um, and Kimberly. Yeah, she just wrote, wrote them out of the company. Yeah, yeah I think she might have she wrote them off TV. Um, but, you know, she also showed us that she is, she's super duper pregnant. So that's pretty cool. Congrats to Rich Swan and, um, and Sue Young. You know, like, I hope all is well with them. And yeah, so that was pretty cool. They they advanced a couple of storylines, you know, like you talk about the Mercedes Martinez. She got a promo, you know. So they, they did a couple of things to set up uh, probably, you know, the next 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 show or whatever. But um, I, but yeah, I actually found out a week ago that she was pregnant. I just wasn't allowed to did say you? anything. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Did the Swans have you over for dinner? Is that what? Did you exchange presents under the no, tree? No, it's actually from a, a a listener that was in the know. Oh, but, uh, nice. That's but, super cool. Ask me Y'all not keep, to say anything. Keep so. it keeping me out of it. I see how it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. No, actually, I, I I just forgot. I should have said something. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, like that. Like huge of a thing that I was like, oh, yeah, guess what yeah. I heard. You know what I mean? But yeah. but that was a pretty cool little addition to the uh, to the to the year end shows. You know what I mean? We got to see um, yeah, that yeah. cool news from you know the artist who plays uh, you know Susie and Susan and uh, Sue Young. <laughs> All of her work is really dope. So big congrats to them on that. Impact likes to kill people. Um, they do. They to, really to get do. them off TV. When they write you off, man, they write you off. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And then you show up a week later on another show. So I got to say, uh, I thought Kimberly was capable of doing more on the show. You know, she just always put her in basically an enhancement talent. I mean, her, she was no different than the uh, Alicia Edwards role. You know, so why not keep her right? You got to have someone lose. Yeah. But instead, true. Alicia's the only person that loses consistently. Uh, yeah. But but uh, Kimberly was in that ballpark. But I I just thought she was capable of more. And then uh, Brandy Loren, you know, I see her her social media posts. I'm like, man, this is probably their arguably top like two hottest knockouts. And we put her in makeup and <laughs> just funny. But yeah, I don't know that that's. Uh, two runs for her in the company where they just didn't do you know, anything with her. Nothing, you know, super, super forgettable. I mean, have you seen her wrestle? Like how is she as a wrestler? Oh, no, don't get me wrong. She's a, uh, there's a lot of improvement she needs mm-hmm. to make, but um, you know, Allie told me once upon a time uh, that she, she, she's that Brandy works very, you know, very, very hard to, to improve her craft. Like she's not, okay. a, yeah. you know, like she really wants to be better, wants to be good. So, you know, yeah. All right. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't know. It's one of those things where like, that's also kind of the good thing about them having her, but not doing much with her is it really leaves the door open to say, Hey, we're going to do something for real with you this time. You know what right, I mean? Right, it's right. Like, you were here, the, the, you know, we got to see you, but this time we're going to bring you in and do something, you know, something people haven't seen. And I think, like you said, like you mentioned, she's a good looking woman. And I think that like, you know, listen, well, fair or not like that's a free ticket to get on tv you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah you know people people always want pretty people on tv 
You know what I mean? You're a good looking dude. You're a good looking woman. Uh, people will find a way to put you on their TV show. So, you know, so, I, yeah, so, so I, I, the door's probably not closed on her at all. Yeah. So, you know, sex sells. I mean, we, we know that in television. That's why I'm always like, dude, get Dave Penzer out of there. Get, you know, like <laughs> that, that's why I was like happy that Gail Kim is on TV as an authoritative figure. I'm like, what is this obsession with like fat old white guys? Like get someone people want to look at, you know what I mean? So <laughs> when you uh, say sex, I think Dave Penzer. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I still want Penzer to do uh play by play, dude. I, I, I swear after that, that TNA show he did, I was like, dude, he, that's what he was born to do. Right. And I right. think it was just something he just stepped into for that episode. And I was like, dude, this fucker sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, so it looks like they're gone, but you, I mean, you got to make cuts to make additions. Cause you, you would have to believe they're in play for some of these girls from ring of honor. Mm, good point great you know I mean? point so, great yeah, point yeah they they got some talented girls there so and so you, you have to hope that that's what it is right you have yeah. to hope that's what it is and i think that when it comes to impact um their the direction of their of their knockouts division i think is always like an interesting conversation right it's like um you know exactly uh, it, it's always been more character based, right? You think of like ODB and the beautiful people, and you know, what I mean, it, it's always very, very, very character driven, character based. You know, wonky storylines, all of that stuff. Um, that's just that's that's how they get down. That's how they they sell their women's division. Um, again, like th- every now and then, they end up with uh, uh, just a cast of killers, and you want to see those killers go at it. You know what I mean? Like the, you, you know. Think of the group they had leading up to Slammiversary of last year, right? And I was like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. Like, you know, I can't wait to see the combinations of, you know, Jordan and Taya. Oh my God, and, dude, yeah. And, and Kylie Ray and, you know, and, and all of this. I was like, man, this is going to be amazing. And that's just not the direction that they go with their knockouts, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, the knockouts are not here for, you know, the, um, the, 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 the super athletic, you know, uh, five star matches, like for whatever reason, that's not what they want them to do. Um, and but they have women who can do it, but for some reason, that's just not what they want them to do. And, and that's so, what we were talking about last week about going all in on the knockout division because they like to remind you that that's what the what division used to be, but right, they don't want to give that to you now. It's still a right. good division, it's a great division, but it's like, as you said, very character based, you know. Um, you know, there was a match on AEW last week. It was uh, Chris Statlander and Layla Hirsch. And they don't do shit with Layla Hirsch, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know, and, and granted, Chris Statlander's a character, but, I mean, they just went out there and had a had a badass match. You know, they right. just let the women do their thing. And uh, it just, I just want to say, I, I, we both would love to see Impact do that more. Like, you can, if you're going to remind people, hey, we, do, we did this with women's wrestling, well, do that now with women's wrestling, you know? Right, exactly. And you know what? And and by the way, I think that it doesn't have to be either or. You know what I mean? Like right, right. you can you can have you can balance uh you can have Tasha Steels out there um, you know, stealing money from Fala Bob backstage and still let her go out and have a banger in the ring. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be either or. You can you can do character driven, but still like yo, honestly, I wouldn't be opposed i know i've said this before but they could do a one-hour show with the knockouts it'll be fun why not like let them have some real depth to their roster you know what i mean like let you really get to know these characters and know these stories and just really like i said really just have um have some 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 good quality depth man i i just ah, yo i think they're leaving money on the table man like don't get me wrong i know you'd have to find uh time to book it oh my god so we were just talking about like the schedule taping right the 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 taping schedule why not do instead of trying to ask people to sit for you know two hours of two 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 hour shows do your do episode of impact and then tape the knockout show you know what i mean now again you still have to tape more frequently but i think man if they gave these knockouts i think they gave them a chance i think it could be a game changer like how many hour long women's wrestling shows are there out there there's none there's just uh you know women's a wrestling one that's on and then and 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 again with the backing of impact and the history of the knockouts division like dog i'm telling you dog they are just there and 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 by the way 
there's a there's so much like women's wrestling media out there that is waiting like think of all the prominent female voices in the wrestling space like there's more and more coming up all the time and so if you can if you can get these if you can give these people something that they're going to want to talk about all the time i'm telling you man this is this is tailor made like people don't want to do what's next man people just people just want to do what they know works yeah and, yeah and like that's again like especially i talked about like what it's like talking to people in like you know big corporate spaces everybody wants to know how am i going to get my money back but sometimes you got to take a chance man sometimes you got to create something sometimes you got to create something that like you know what i mean again like i know this i know this sounds crazy right i know this sounds crazy but like you know in 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 2000 in 2000 Bill Gates sat in front of somebody, not Bill Gates, Steve Jobs sat in front of somebody and was like, yo, I'm going to make a phone that has a web browser on it and can play all your music. Like, and people are like, why would we need that? I got a computer, all my music on. I, I surfed the web on my computer. Why would I need anything like that? I got this you know huge I mean? book of CDs I carry around with me. Right, yeah. I got all these CDs. What yeah. <laughs> right, so that's what I'm just saying, man. Like, I guarantee you, I guarantee you so many people shot that shit down. I guarantee it. And again, I'm not saying that this idea is the iPod, okay? I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that, like, people are afraid of doing stuff like this because they don't know if it's work. So what if it won't work? Like, WWE. WWE has, like, so many hours of programming to fill. Why not make a show with women? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why not? And, you know, there'll be somebody who'll get offended and be like, oh, well, why do you have to push the women off to their own show? Like, it, it, I mean, you're never going to make everybody happy, but I'm just saying like, you could honestly, honestly, you could do a knockout show and still have them on impact because if, if they're only getting two segments of the show on impact, you use those two segments to build to what we're going to see on the knockout show. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, look, I'm just giving <laughs> the idea impact. Call me, call me. Okay. Call producer, me. producer for hire over here. Come, come get your boy. Pay me. You got to cut the check, though. You got to cut the check. I'm not. These, <laughs> I'm just giving you these. I'm just giving you this goal for free for uh for podcast content. But uh, if you want the good stuff, if you want. By the way, I should find. I wish there was a way you could like copyright the stuff you say on podcast. Because yeah, if, yeah. If Impact announces that they're coming out with a, with an hour long knockout show, I'm gonna be a little a little tick. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I'll be like, yo, that's some bullshit. I'm like. I'm not saying nothing else on this show. <laughs> TW works in TV, so he's not a he's not some amateur. He's not just some like amateur like like myself. I have a certain education in marketing and stuff, but I don't have actual working. Uh, you know, I, I I shouldn't say that because I've marketed my own yeah, thing, my own do. projects, but Bro, I right, haven't me, had me, an actual job doing it. Let me say this for anybody and everybody who might be listening: if you're thinking about like going to grad school for something. What you learn in grad school is how to do stuff on your own. So if so, the best yeah. thing you do, like BQ, what you just said, bro, this, this, all your marketing of your channel, that is very relevant experience. You can put all of that on a resume and sell yourself to somebody. You can go to somebody and be like, yo, I know this about these numbers, about running these channels, about running it up. Blah, 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 blah. Somebody will pay you to run their social media. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, dog, all you got to do is show them how you grew this channel. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, which I've I've completely stopped marketing his channel over the last two years because I don't have the time, but (laughs) the knowledge is there. Trust me. Right. So I'm just saying, but but like, but practical knowledge is doing. Doing is practical knowledge. That that, that's it. Yeah, I uh, I I famously (laughs) had a friend of mine. uh, This was back when I was doing music and stuff, and he he sends me a message. He's like, um, I want to pay you for your time, and you tell me how you how you built a following. I said, okay, Mm -hmm. I charge a dude 50 bucks for an hour. Right. This dude ends up, (laughs) he to this day has a YouTube channel of 200, I mean, well beyond anything I've ever accomplished in my life, but I'm just saying he took my knowledge and ran with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His his channel has like 200,000 subscribers now. Oh my God. Makes like $5,000 a month and like, like live off doing that. My God. I was like, can you teach me yeah. how to do that? Hard to fifty dollars. <laughs> it's a little harder in the wrestling space. Don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, I charge this dude 50, 50 bucks. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. If you can go back and renegotiate that now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should be like one of those old like um, wrestling promoters. They used to book people and and 
get like a vig for life. Be like for I, I, I'm gonna get like five percent of everything you make for the rest of your career. Like there used to be wild shit like that. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but my whole strategy, like the strategy I kind of got into with him because he did music also. I was like, if you just go out there and promote yourself as a music artist, you're no different than everybody else. Right. You know, I, I was like, you actually have to make music 30% of your focus mm. and you have to find a niche that's your 70% mm -hmm. that's going to, um, people are going to follow you for that and be curious about the music. Mm. And that's kind of how you, you know, that's kind of the basis of what I got at with him. Um, yeah. and, and I've mentored a lot of artists over the year who didn't take the advice or why well, I, I, I just want to go with music. I was like, okay, yeah, well, yeah. Tell me how that works out for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, so... So what, what did he do that was his, like, his uh, his distraction from the from the music? He did... Uh, so he used to be a, a drug addict. Okay. So he did... Um, a, he, he created a channel based on um, recovering oh, from, nice. from addiction. The, the, that, that's, the, that's the business person to me, like, oh. Oh, that's a great angle. Right. <laughs> like Vince McMahon, when he hears about like uh, 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 Eddie Guerrero's drug addiction, that's a great angle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> but that, you know, that, that's the reason I'm even wasting time saying that right now is because that's why I've always, with Impact, been like original content. Stop making everything about the wrestling and the stuff in the ring because that's no different than what everyone else is doing. I was like, what can you do that's. Uh, that that can bring people in. That's not so much about the in ring. You know what I mean? Oh man, dog! Now you giving away you giving away free money right there. You guys, oh, you guys we're gonna cool. cut that off right there. We're gonna cut that yeah, off. Yeah, okay. You, you giving away free money right there, dog? That's jewels. <laughs> oh, that's jewels. Woo! BQ dropping jewels on you. Oh my god, <laughs> yo, BQ, yo, bro, bro. That was like that was like a that, that was like that was like a that was like a billion dollar piece of advice you just gave right there. Like for a company like Impact. Who, who, based on their platform and their followers, like what they stand to make, is it like, so, so for a perfect example, like we're just talking about like, we've just, we, this has evolved into a business class, into a marketing class. So like an example of, of no, I'm sorry, this has evolved, okay? Come for the wrestling, stay for the learning. Okay? <laughs> the, um, so, so look at WWE, for example. WWE has marketed themselves as an entertainment brand as a family focused entertainment company. It's a fucking wrestling show. It's always been a wrestling show. It's always gonna be a wrestling show. And you people, and people buy all the rest of this. Oh, does they make toys? Huh? They do make toys, they do. But it's all about the wrestling. It's all about the wrestling. You know what I mean? People come for the, the, the experience, the fan experience, the lights and sounds, the music, all the aura, the history, all of that. Right, WWE sells its brand, all of that stuff. The aura of WWE is the brand, but what they're selling is the wrestling. Oh my God, be cute, bro! Do, Holy shit! Right, but, but do you know how many people started watching the wrestling out of curiosity because they were following Total Divas? Right, like right, they completely exactly. stepped out of their space. With but something. the sell of Total Divas is these are people who do this thing. Right, right, right. You know I'm, I'm not saying? saying just completely forget the wrestling, but it's like, how do you grab people without saying, hey, come watch our wrestling show and we wrestle? Like, how, you have to connect with people a different way, you know? That's why, dude, like, so when, when back when I first started the Impact Lounge, they, were, they used to do this segment on YouTube that they got rid of that was, like, called My First Day at Impact or some shit like that. I thought that was the most enterta like, entertaining thing they had on their channel they yeah. sit down with Mike Ben and tell us about your first day at Impact oh Wrestling. Oh my God, yo, dog! You know, I'm actually I'm thinking of a I'm thinking of a of a I just got a great idea for like a campaign they could do, but I'm not gonna say nothing else because I'm not giving away no free money. I got I, I just came with a, we could talk about it offline, but I just came with a just based off that a great idea for a marketing campaign Impact Wrestling could do. Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> we, we'll talk about it when we, when we finish when we finish this call. But I'm not giving right. away no more free money because I know the streets is watching, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do this. We've uh, <laughs> we ran a lot longer than I think we expected to. So um, we're going to talk about just some year in review type of things. Um, we, we got a couple categories here. We got four categories that we're just going to talk about real quick. And then uh, 
hopefully we don't drag on too long about it, but uh, we're not going to do awards. Like, like I said, who's your wrestler of the year? You know, we're going <laughs> to be a little bit, little bit different, same concept, but just, just approach it a little differently. So uh, the first thing that we want, I want to ask you about um, it's in the vein of wrestler of the year, but uh, what male and what female had, had the best year. And this is going to encompass, you know, just everything, just, just like from the promos to how they've grown as a, wrestler and what they mean to the company and, and all that like who who just who just had a again this is kind of in the vein of wrestler of the year but it's there's more to it than that it's deeper so you know what what male to you just had the best the best year in impact you know taking everything into consideration right so taking everything into consideration i think there's a there's a lot of a lot of people that you could um that you could you, you could say here uh i know it's not but there's like, <laughs> um, I think that it comes down to two people. It comes down to two people. And one would be Josh Alexander. He had a very strong end to the year. Um, you know, once they decided to start going with him, um, that he was going to be the person they were going to build to this, you know, homegrown impact star to take the title off Kenny Omega, bring it back home from, from, from AEW. And we could, we could clearly see, that Josh Alexander was becoming that person. It got hot and it got hot quick. And it was very interesting. We were super excited for it. Um, but like, um, but yeah, I mean like, but, but that was honestly, that was a very kind of short, that was, that was, that was like the second half of the year. Right. right? That was, that was realistically like from May to October. Um, exactly. But the best year overall has to be Moose. Moose had the best year out of anybody, excuse me, any male wrestler uh, in Impact. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Moose had a year that went up and down. It went up and down. But, I, and I, in my reactions to Moose, have been, you know, you know, high at some points. I've been low at some points. But what I realized, I learned this from watching John Cena is that you don't have to have the belt to be a feature attraction. And Moose, this year, for Impact, proved that he became a feature attraction with or without the belt. He became a feature attraction all year and then got the belt at the end of the year. So uh, if you look back at the year Moose had, right, Moose came into the year very hot. He was coming off like, you know, a two-year streak of being undefeated on pay-per-views. Like they would, you know, roll out legends and whoever, whatever they had to do. But what he was doing, he was just, you know, boom, wins in the bank, wins in the bank, wins in the bank. So he came into this year, it was like, oh man, I think everybody collectively felt like this has got to be Moose's year because it's like, if not, then when, right? Um, and then obviously, you know, COVID hit and, you know, we got to the MTE arena thing, but, you know, they still, they did the thing with Moose and EC3 and Moose did a character change and it just made him so much more interesting as far as what's going to, what's going to come, um, what, 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 what's going to come, you know, from, from this character Moose. And when they did for me, I think the, the, the turning point in Moose's year, and I honestly, maybe the turning point in Moose's career was when he filled in to that six man match uh, when Alex Shelley bailed okay and he filled in he filled into that six-man match when moose was in that six-man match against kenny omega and the good brothers moose was the star of that match moose came out of that match as the star moose was somebody who every impact fan looked at coming out of that match it was like yo that's the guy that's the guy there's like there's like, there's like i know that our world champion rich swan is in this match and i know that Kenny Omega, the best wrestler in the world is in this match, but Moose looks like the baddest motherfucker in this match. I think everybody came away saying that. And he had a great match. He shined. He did some dope spots. And at that moment, Moose became a feature attraction. Then he goes on and he, you know, he has the, the unification match with Rich Swan where he loses the TNA belt. But um, then, you know, he goes on and he challenges Kenny Omega. And, and by the way, he stayed in the main event picture this whole time. He was looming, looming over Rich Swan's shoulder. Then he got the, the match against Kenny Omega. And even though he lost, they protected him in the loss. And I thought he sold way too much for Kenny Omega, but it was fine, right? He didn't come out of that match looking weak. Um, 
But the point is, he stayed as a feature attraction the whole time. And then to win the Call Your Shot Battle Royal uh, gauntlet, and then to, you know, steal Josh Alexander's moment at the end of Bound for Glory, it was perfect. It was perfect. And I would say even the cherry on top of this great year that Moose had was the promo he cut where he said he's the baddest champion in all professional wrestling. And he made all his little, you know, he threw all his little digs in there at all the different, uh, you know, people who he admires around the business. But for me, I think, you know, you could, Josh Alexander would be a distant second, but the best year of any male wrestler in Impact Wrestling has to go to Moose. I'm in complete agreement with you. You know, I, th- I think we're going to chat about this a little bit later, but they protected him in a way versus Kenny Omega that they didn't do to Rich Swan. you know, um, and Rich Swan never quite bounced back from that. Um, what about, let, let's talk female. I'm, I'm sure we're going to be in, in agreement on this too. So I'm, I'm not going to, um, you know, put a hat on top of a hat and talk about Moose. So you just yeah, went through right. all that. So, uh, but yeah, Deanna, or, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I would assume oh, it's going to be good, Deanna, good. but. It, would you say that's? I mean, she's she's clearly the had the the year for the females. Like, you, there's not even a close second place. Right. You know. Right. right. Um. And and um. Yeah. I mean, there's really there's there is no the closest thing to a second place you could possibly say, um. You know, would be Mickey James for having the great comeback story and for what she added to this story. This has been a great story arc, man. Like, if you just step back. And look at the totality of this Mickey James, Deanna Perazzo story. This has been a great story. This has really been one of the best told stories in wrestling this whole year. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's, this is not even a question. Like, uh, Deanna Perazzo, hands down, has had the best year of, of, of any knockout. Like, just reigning supremely over the knockouts division. And then what she's been doing by, you know, becoming the AAA uh, Reina Duranis champion. Um, you know, she's breathing life back in the, into the ROH title because she's already challenged the, the Ring of Honor Women's Champion for, you know, that next thing. When, when Deanna Perrazzo walked out on that ROH show, she got a bigger pop than she gets on Impact Wrestling. Now, some of that might be due to their production issues, but you, the, 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 the pop was audible and undeniable. And um, yeah, I mean, like you just, you absolutely can't deny it. Like um, you're just being a hater if you, don't acknowledge Deanna Perrazzo as having had one of the best years of any woman in the wrestling business. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So well, well said, but you're right. The, the pop but also, was audible. I want to say Deanna Perrazzo has the only fans. Everybody go subscribe and, um, you know, let me know how it is, but also, uh, she's a, she's a, a disgusting heel and boo her. When you see her, <laughs> boo her. When you see Deanna Perrazzo online, boo her, just tweet her and say, boo. Boo, Deanna Perrazzo. Boo. Okay. But yeah, there's there's not a close second place. And uh, Ring of Honor sound quality is just better than Impact's. It just, mm. uh, I just, I noticed during um, the Impact Plus shows, the audio is, is no, they actually have had some pretty shit audios uh, that they, uh, the audio level's been peaking. But if you take the uh, turning point, like that one was crystal clear. It sounded great. And there's something about the Im- impact episodes that don't sound good, but ring of honors is vote. You could always hear the crowd. Like that just, right. You know. right. Um, so what, what was, if you have three of what you say were the best parts of the show, um, or the best part, just the three good things about impact, but you know, pri- for overall best part of the show over the course of 2021. Okay. So if I'm going to give you my, my three best things about Impact Wrestling for 2021, um, number one would have to be the return of fans. Um, when they, you know, brought let fans back in the Skyway studio, oh my, mwah, mwah. It was just like a breath of fresh air. I could go back and watch that episode where fans came back a million times. Oh, oh, oh no, was it a pay-per-view? It was a pay-per-view. It was, was, was it Slammiversary where fans came back? Hmm. It, no, it wasn't Slam version. No. It was it was soon after that though. I feel like. Yeah, it was after it. I think they had crowd yeah. noises for Slam anniversary. Yeah, but whenever it was, when the fans came back, it was amazing. It was just amazing. So fans coming back to Impact was like really good. Um, like you know, all the empty arena wrestling was really wearing on me, man. It was really wearing on me, and like 
there's been times when I've honestly just been on the ropes as a fan where I just been like, yo, man, like I just, I just am not going to make time in my day, in my week to watch this. Like, you know what I mean? I, I'm a busy person. I work, I got two kids. Like I don't have to make time for this. You know what I mean? Um, and, and the empty arena wrestling was, like I said, it was wearing on me, but, um, but I was, I was very happy to see, you know, fans come back to wrestling, uh, to impact wrestling. And so that was one of the big hits, uh, of 2021 for me, for impact. Um, uh, another, another big hit for me for impact this year was, um, I really enjoyed the, the, the Josh Alexander story. Like, I, like I enjoyed watching the build. Like I enjoyed kind of figuring it out as it was happening. Right. Like, because, because there was a long time where we were saying, who's going to be the person to take this title off Kenny Omega. Um, and then once we kind of realized we were Chris, I don't know if you remember the episode where, uh, where Alexander and Omega bump into each other in the hallway. And I'm like, yes, yeah, yeah. it's happening. Right. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, um, and so that was really fun to watch. You know, I, you know, I, 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 it didn't, it didn't go exactly as I planned and exactly as I wanted. Now I don't think it went exactly as impact wanted either, but it was still fun to watch impact actually trying to build a homegrown star. That story is still in progress, but I think, um, you know, I think that, um, I think it's going to be great. You know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's going to be great. Um, and if I, if there was one more thing, if there was one more thing that I liked about impact coming into this year, I would say, oh, the, of the best things about impact for 2021. Um, oh my goodness. This is, this is tough. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Um, one of the best things about impact in 2021 was probably, Oh, Oh man, this is tough. Moose. It was Moose. Okay. I'm gonna give it, I, I, I gotta give it to Moose. Moose had the good, the good year uh, that I just talked about. I thought it was a great moment of him in that six man tag match. And I thought, um, and, and him winning the title, as we just discussed, that was absolutely one of the highlights of the year for me. Um, and also, Oh, another, another, uh, another highlight, honorable mention or whatever. Um, the Mickey James, Deanna Perazzo story. This has been excellent. This has been a long form story arc. It's really reminded me why I love veterans in wrestling. Like as much as we talk about like Tommy dreamer, you know, being, being annoyed at how much TV time Tommy Dreamer gets. Like when you see veterans on these shows, they do such a great job of like presenting their character and, you know, really getting the story across in the right ways. And Mickey James just added so much to this Deanna Perazzo story, man, so much. And so the Mickey Deanna feud, I thought um, has breathed new life into Deanna's run. And, um, and yeah, I mean, like that was, so that was, that was, that was probably four things. That was four things, but uh, those are my top things from impact wrestling for 2021. How about you? All right. So I'll get into mine. I have to mess with the mute button here. Cause now the fireworks getting pretty crazy in the background, but I think what one thing is that they found a way to create a spoiler free show. And um... all right. Sorry folks. I had to hit the pause button there for a second. They found a way to create a, a spoiler free show. And um, even though, yeah, it leads to a disconnect with the audience because they don't know what they're watching. They don't know what the stakes are on anything. They don't know what the pay-per-view matches are. They don't have a freaking clue. And I think it comes off on television. And I think it hurts the show. It's, it's one of those things are like, okay, well, we're just going to have to take that hit uh, so that, you know, we can create a show where people don't know ahead of time what's going to happen. So they found a way to do it. Um, th there's a lot of, st you know, we, we talk about, feuds being built by bumping each other backstage but that's that's kind of the way that they've what they've had to do create a spoiler free show i think there's a more creative way they can do it than bumping each other backstage but you know uh but we do get a spoiler free um i think it's the best knockouts division they've had in years i think they're just in a good job of putting putting it together now we talked about going all in and having the girls really really work and they can't seem to do anything real important outside of the title pictures um I mean, you really can't look at the women's division right now and say there's a storyline anyone cares about outside of what Dion is doing and, you know, the knockouts tag team championships. I mean, they just, you know, what's Decay doing? You know, what's what, what are some of these girls doing? But you're talking about top to bottom. I think it's the best um, division in a while, in a really long time. 
Uh, and then finally, just they always seem to put on good pay-per-views. I thought Balfour Glory was lacking a little bit, uh, you know. Um, but for the most part, their pay-per-views are, you know, pretty, pretty solid. Uh, what about the worst part? If you had, you know, you know, a few things that uh, we could see improvement on. Yeah, so if I had to, if I had to, to pick one thing in particular, um, the, to me, the worst thing for, from Impact this year, well, I, I can give you a couple of things. One, and we kind of referenced this earlier, was, um, you know, they, they, did, they did nothing to protect Rich Swan in that uh, leading up to him losing the title at Kenny Omega. Like, I, I tweeted about this the other day. You know, when they did that six-man tag match, the one we talked about earlier, like, why did Rich Swan have to take the pin in that? Why? That was your world champion. Why did Rich Swan have to take the pin? Especially knowing that Kenny Omega was going to pin him eventually for that title. So you had your, your world champion eat Kenny Omega's finish and get pinned by him twice in a row. Why? What was the point of that? Like, what? how is that protecting your champion at all? And you can't come back at me and be like, what's the point of protecting your champion? What the hell is Tony Khan doing? Why the hell couldn't an impact person get that title back from uh, from 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 uh, Kenny Omega? OK, like it, you had uh, Chris Saban in that match. You had Moose in that match, either one of them. And you knowing that you were building up Moose for something bigger later then duh, have Chris Saban eat that pin. That makes perfect sense. Have Chris Saban eat the one wing, one wing angel and eat the pin from Kenny Omega. Um, but but to have Rich Swan do it, and then so they had Rich Swan eat that pin. Then they had Rich Swan eat another pin. Not just eat the pin, but the way the match ended, I hate it. I hate that the, they in, they they do the they did this match in a way where um, you know Kenny Omega was just beating Rich Swan so badly that he was like lifeless by the end of that match and he just you know couldn't kick out or the way i'm like yo man that is just trash bro that was just, that was honestly you didn't have to do that and then after that they had rich swan lose in his feud with w morrissey like why why so you just had rich swan come off this long title run and you had him lose to kenny omega you could have prop rich swan right back up at the top of the card by having him win that feud against w morrissey he w morrissey is a heel he doesn't need to be winning he just needs to put people in danger right like and and terrorize people but then you have the good guy triumph at the end right and, and so they could have done that and they could have boom kept rich swan up here which is like i said about moose the champ the 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 feature attraction does not have to have the belt but you just keep them strong. So you make it so that when anybody beats Rich Swan, it's a big freaking deal, okay? Like, again, an example of this, right? Seth Rollins, right? Like, Seth Rollins, he's not the champion in WWE, but he wins almost all the time, okay? And so if anybody beats him, it's supposed to be a big deal, right? It's supposed to be a big deal. And that's what you do when, you, when somebody is a feature player, a feature attraction, you keep them strong like that. OK, and, and uh, they had a great opportunity to do that with Rich Swan, and they didn't do it. They really just said F you to Rich Swan in that sense. And I thought that was really trash on behalf of Impact Wrestling. Um, another thing about Impact that I would uh, like to have seen done better is in that whole exchange partnership with, with AEW, I was like, I would like to see Impact get a little more. I think they should have pushed back more on the Kenny Omega not dropping the Impact title to an Impact person. Like the, the Josh Alexander story felt incomplete because he got to win the title off of Christian Cage instead of winning it off of Kenny Omega. That would have felt like a star making performance after the year, the half year that Josh Alexander had had up to that point, the bangers upon bangers he was putting on. And if you don't believe me, go back. Watch the, where, the match where he won the X Division Championship. Watch the Iron Man with TJP. Watch the match he had with uh, Jake something. Like, banger after banger after banger. And to cap that off by defeating Kenny Omega for the championship? That's a made man right there. That's a made man. Um, and I thought that they really kind of, you know, they, 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 they really kind of screwed that up by not letting him get that title off Kenny Omega. Again, they should have gave some pushback, man. They should have gave some pushback on Josh Alexander getting that title back from Kenny Omega, being the one to get that title back and get it off of Kenny Omega. 
I think that, like I said, that would have helped Impact Wrestling much more in the long run. And if there's one more thing about Impact Wrestling that I didn't like, it's that as much as I was happy to see crowds back, I was annoyed by the way that we would just lose the sound from the crowd at times throughout the episode because of the way they were taping it, the way they were producing it in post-production, right? Again, you know, we've talked about this, right? Like there's layers of audio to a video, right? And you have the, the, the Nats, the, the in arena sound from when they actually taped it. But when you have to record the, 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 the commentary over the matches later, it's just, it's just different, right? Like it's a whole nother layer of audio that they're reading over a tape. Right. And so it just, so it makes the, the in arena audio sound way lower. So, um, and you, and by the way, go back and watch any of the shows this week from a W or WWE that were all taped and you'll hear it. You'll hear it there too. Right. Like the, the, the in arena sound is much lower because you can't hear the crowd because they, the, they're recording over it. They're recording over the audio in order to put the commentary in. So there was just way too much of that would impact. Like I said, I think that, you know, if you think back to like the takeover era of NXT, the crowd was the most important part of that show. Like just listening to them chant, you know, all their chants and, and, and cheers in every match. And people were so excited when fans came back to Impact. I thought they had a chance to recondition the audience that the crowd is that kind of a part of the show for Impact as well. And I think that they've just, you know, again, by, by, by producing your show that way, you take that crowd out of the mix. So I'd like to see them fix that. That was one of my, you know, least favorite things about Impact. So those are my three things I kind of hated about Impact in 2021. So um, I'm going to double down on that one. Uh, and and I'm, I'm not going to go into a big, long rant about this because I, I rant about it almost every single week. But the overall editing of the show and uh, obviously what you're saying with the crowd is an issue. And it, it's it's weird because it... I've never realized how it's gotten progressively worse over the years because I watched the Mike Bennett debut the other day out of curiosity, just cause you know, there's chatter about him showing up. So I wanted to relive his, his debut. And um, it was in, you know, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. There was three, 400 people in the audience loud as shit. And I remember back then being, Oh my God, you could barely hear the, the, the crowd. That was like, the debut of the destination America era. No, the Pop TV. Oh, the Pop TV. Yeah, Aaron, Pop I'm sorry, TV. You're right. You're right. You're but right. But I remember back then saying like, wow, wow, you could barely hear the crowd. Like compare that. Just I challenge you guys, look up the Mike Bennett debut. Compare that to what we hear right now on a weekly basis. And you're going to hear why I always say this is some amateur shit when it comes to editing the show. Just just freaking compare the two and uh, tell me that it's got it, that it's tell me with a straight face that it's gotten better over the years. So um, but, you know. Just the little stuff, the whoosh between the segments, which I think really d desensitizes what we just saw in the ring. Like when you, I remember watching Willie Mack catch a beat down by Josh Alexander and uh, Ethan Page, where he was almost in the hospital, and then it finished, whoosh. And then there's Matt Josh Matthews talking over Wheel in the Night. Like that, that, that's like to me, I just I don't understand that because you just completely take the emotion out of a, a segment and make it look like a fake wrestling show. When you right, do that right. kind of stuff. So, um, I, you know, obviously I talk about the wheel and the nice shit all the time. So I'm not going to, you know, hammer that home. But um, and then the other thing we kind of talked about social media, top of the hour um, or top of the show. I'm not going to get into that all over again, because, again, that's another thing I talk about on a very regular basis. Um, but uh, I'm not going to say the commentary because I think it's been a step up from Josh. The way Josh Matthews ended his run, you know, like Josh used to sound good. <laughs> but like he got really bad towards the end and um it's a step up from that but it's still super freaking rehearsed and but it's been sounding better now that they're doing it in the in the arena but um so i'm not gonna talk i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say scott do more being on screen all the time even though it's a cl very very close mm -hmm. um i'm gonna talk about the tag team division i think it's it's they it's ruined right now it, it is bad it is bad 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 it's been bad for about three years you know, ever since LAX and the Lucha Brothers left, the tag team division has been horrible. And, you know, I, I often talk about 
the North had the titles for so long, but they didn't beat anybody. Like mm. they didn't really defend the titles as much as Impact tried to act like they did. And every time they did defend it, it was okay. It's you know random Japanese wrestler and Eddie Edwards. It's a uh, Tessa Blanchard and Eddie Edwards. Like they didn't actually have feuds against real the actual tag teams in a division. So you had uh, you know the Desi Hit Squad and, and you had Reno Scum and you had Triple XL and you had uh, OVE and you had like there was a lot of teams, but they were never fighting for the for the belts and. They weren't doing anything separately. They were just being, you know, just like jobbers in a sense. Um, you know, and Adam Thornstow from Reno Scum, he said in an interview, you know, like we were involved in so many matches that didn't do anything for anybody. You know, like just the tag team division was just handled horribly. And then you look at it now and it's still bad. The Good Brothers still aren't feuding with anybody. They only, re- you know, if it's not Finn Juice or the Bullet Club, what? Who are they like building a real program with? And again, you had the Triple XL, you had Decay, you had, I mean, you have them. There's more. You would think when you say the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Division, you would think it's the Bullet Club, Finn Juice, and the Good Brothers, and it would take you at least ten seconds to be like, and oh, and Decay, and Rich Swan and Willie Mack. But if you actually look at the Impact roster, there's a lot of tag teams. You just you you would never know it by the way it's presented on TV, right? And it's clear that they were like Good Brothers, were like hey, please please fucking sign here. We need a big signing for anniversary. You can do whatever the hell you want. And they're the blandest part of the show. Um, and to appease them, the rest of the teams have looked like crap. And I mean, they're beating a dead horse keeping the titles on these guys, dude. Like these dudes should have last lost two game matches ago. They should have lost a Bound for Glory. And then they wrestled again on a turning point. They should have fucking lost there too. And they, they still won. They won again. And it's just like, oh my God, dude. It, it's the closest thing to the like John Cena run of the, the early 2000s where it was like, or the mid 2000s, I should say. He just, every pay-per-view just kept, he de- defended a title and he just kept winning. And, and, and a pay-per-view would come, like he would wrestle... Randy Orton or Chris Jericho, like three straight pay-per-views. And you're like, by the third one, you're like, dude, surely he's going to lose this time. And it was like, he just wanted, like, it just continued. And it was like, oh my God. And uh, you got the Bullet Club, which is like the hottest faction in wrestling, or arguably, dude. And they have they have cooled this flame off. They have doused it with a, with a fire hose. And that shit is ice cold right now. Those dudes should be the champions. You know, like, that. that's insane. But it's like, it's this, even if you look at the pay-per-view, they have this big shit show hardcore match, five on five. To me, it just looks like an excuse to keep, to keep the titles on the Good Brothers for another pay-per-view, you know? Right. And then the summer's going to hit, their contract's going to run up, they're probably going to leave, and what, what, did they, what did it do for anybody in that division, right. you know? No one was better for them being there. So tag team division is the absolute cheeks, um, <laughs> you know, so... And One more thing here. Way. What's that? <laughs> I said it not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, not not in a good way. It, it is, I mean, you saw AC Romero left the company. Like, you know, AC Romero's not being courted by AEW or NXT, you know, publicly. Like, right. hey, we're trying to pull you away. Like, he was just like, fuck this, you yeah. know? So um last last thing, we're gonna we're gonna end up in this long show. That way we can go to bed. Um <laughs> We're gonna talk about our breakout stars for 2022. I remember Willie Mack was the the winner a couple of years ago on Impact, and uh, <laughs> he's in the same exact place on the car that he was back then. X. He, he had that little <laughs> X Division title run. Um, yeah. So, what what uh, what female do you think is gonna have a big 2022? Okay, so a female that I think is gonna have a big 2022, even though they have not been on Impact TV lately is Tasha Stills. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I'm impressed you can it, do that. I'm going to give it to Tasha Stills because, I, I mean, like, yo, come on, man. Go back and watch that Knockouts Knockdown pay-per-view. Um, that was hers. That was hers, man. She owned it. She carried it. I, You know, I think she wrestled three times. I think she cut three promos, and she just owned each and every segment that she was in. She was dope. Um, she's absolutely somebody who... I think should be next up. As a matter of fact, 
I kind of thought she was, especially when Mickey James won the title off Deanna Perrazzo. I was like, oh, this makes sense. Cause I was like, they're really building up Tasha Stills as a single. So it didn't make sense that Deanna Perrazzo would be the champion because, you know, Tasha Stills trying to get that title off Deanna Perrazzo. That feels weird to me. Although you can do it. You can certainly do heel versus heel. I, and I actually really like that kind of storytelling. Um, but usually, you know, we go with the, you know, basic, you know, baby face versus heel. So um, Tasha Stills can do it all, man. She can do it absolutely all. Um, she's a great character and the knockouts division is very character based. So I think that Tasha Stills is set up for a big breakout in 2022. How about you? Who you got? I can dig that. So I'm going to go with, um, I'm taking a little more chance here, but I think uh, Lady Frost is going to go. I mean, I just think she is. I, I don't say this loosely. A lot of people in the wrestling world say, oh, this guy's a star and they're nothing more than a mid Carter. Like this is someone who to me is a freaking star because she, she has a little bit of a character to her um, and she has, and, and she can wrestle. And uh, you know, that's why to me, like Shotzi, Shotzi Blackheart to me, like to me, that was always a star. Like when I saw her, you know, um, granted she's not getting the biggest push in the world, but she's on the big stage. But when I first saw her, you know, prior to doing impact work, I was like, yo, this is a fucking star here. She, she comes with a ready-made gimmick. She doesn't need a big company tell her, Hey, this is who you need to be. And she, and she can go in the ring, you know? And that's how I look at lady frost, or I just think she's incredible in the ring. Um, and as I've said many times on these shows, like I can understand why she's a baby face and it works, but man, her heel work is, is great. Um, yeah. And I'd love to see more of that, but I, I don't think we're going to. Uh, maybe, maybe eventually. But I think she's too popular with the Impact crowd. But she's 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 good, man. Like, um, yeah. if, if they can, I've always pointed out over the years that they have struggled to book a a, a female talent that they sign from scratch. And and she's not mm-hmm. from scratch. That's not what I'm saying. But but she is come, largely unknown to the to the wider audience. Right, right. So when they see her, she's never done anything significant for AEW, WWE. So, you know, she's largely unknown. Yeah, so they've struggled with that in the past. The 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 one instance where they haven't was Tasha, I mean, uh, Kira mm-hmm. Hogan. But Kira Hogan's doing bigger things now, more important things than than she did in Impact. I mean, she had the t- right. and that mm-hmm. title run, but how long did it take her to get to that point? Now she's, I, I watched the last episode of NWA, she's teaming with Mickey James wrestling mm-hmm. uh for the for the belts from Allison K and Marty Bell like she would never team with Mickey James on impact you know like right. they didn't they didn't put her up there like that you know but she wrestled at Mickey James at the pay-per-view they wouldn't have put her versus Mickey James at the pay-per-view impact right. Right. you know um so you know I think I I think even though she's in a smaller company work I say she's part of AEW but she doesn't do anything they let her do NWA it's a much smaller company, but she's doing more important things for the most part. So that's, but, but that being said, she was one, the one like homegrown star. They really did something with the knockouts and then Tasha steals. She she's getting there. I mean, she was with NWA first, but again, it's a smaller company. So, you know, we can give her a pass for that, but for the most part, they have struggled mm-hmm. when they get someone in that hasn't, that isn't, you know, isn't much of a name, you know? Right. So, yeah. um, you know, I think I think Frost is excellent. So, uh, what do you got for for male? And then we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, breakout male star. Okay, breakout male star uh, for 2022. Okay, I'm gonna go with somebody who who should have been a breakout male star in 2021. But I'm just gonna give Impact the benefit of the doubt that they're gonna figure this out in 2022. <laughs> will be the year of Chris Bay. I think Chris Bay is going to be the breakout star in Impact for 2022. They are going to figure out some way to use this phenomenal talent that they have uh, right there sitting in their lap right now before he gets away to another company and becomes a super duper star for them. Um, Chris Bay is going to be my breakout star of 2022. And I'm going to go with Trey Miguel here. I think, um, thank God they put the X Division title on him because it was getting to the point where they had to put they had to put a belt on them because if they if I felt like if they went any longer like there's a Jake something period where they could have done something with them, but they let it they let it get past us and now like how the hell do you bring them back? I was worried Trey Miguel was going that direction too, um, 
as a part of the Rascals as solo, they didn't win shit. They didn't win any titles. And then he comes back. Gimmick's a little different. It's more serious. It's a great theme song, great entrance, great look. He's not that silly character as before. And uh, I was just like, you know, he's been a re- he returned a while ago. And it was just like, okay, he's putting on good matches. What are we going to yeah, do with right, him? Yeah. And then they finally put the belt on him, and it's kind of like, whew, okay, I think they, yeah. <laughs> they saved him. Because had he lost that title match, he would have gotten to that Jake something ter- territory or close to it where it's like, all right, what's he, who's he wrestling on BTI this week? Right. You know, because there's only yeah, yeah. so much someone can lose. That, that's what concerns me with Ace Austin and Chris Bay a little bit. Yeah, they had some mm-hmm. X Division title runs, but it's like you look at Ace Austin, he don't win no feuds. He, 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 with the exception of winning the title, you put him in another match, he doesn't win. So, you know, he'll win on impact, but if you put him in a paper, right. here's your feud with this person, he's not going to win. And uh, so him and Chris Bay, I think they're just dangerously close to lose. Like Chris, the Bullet Club cannot lose another tag team title match. They just can't. Like if they, if they were to get one more title run, title shot here soon and they lose, like they're, they're fucking done. Hmm. Um, then, then you have to. That's why I always bring up the EC3 example, where it was like he had his chance to win his third world title. They decided, ah, let's keep it on Lashley longer. And then EC3 fell into a place where it was like we cannot get him back to where he was. Like they tried, and it was it was dead. And we all loved EC3, but they, you know, they botched the story. Um, so thank God, I think they saved Trey Miguel from that. So yeah, good yeah. call, good call. I think that's going to do it for us. This is a long yeah, episode. Yeah. I hope you all appreciate the time we spent, okay, putting together this episode. This is a long episode, man. I think, how long did we go? This has to be over two hours. Yeah, dude. We're probably two hours, 15 minutes, I'd say. Woof. Oh, my God. I hope you guys appreciate it. Make sure you drop down in the comments exactly how much you appreciate it. Um, again, I know I said we were going to do a mailbag episode. That mailbag episode is coming, so... Keep dropping your comments down below. Uh, leave your name and where you're from so we can give you a shout out. Thank you so much for tuning into this show. Uh, BQ, tell the people where they can find you out here in these social media streets. As always, at BQ Speaks on Twitter and uh, at the Impact Lounge on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can find me at TW talking about on your social media of choice. Um, you could also follow my podcast page at talking about pod on the Twitters. And you could also find follow the talking about pod uh, here on YouTube. Please go like rate and subscribe to that channel as well. I love you all so much. Um, all right, man. So listen, thank everybody for taking the time out to listen to us. This is a very crowded social media space and we do appreciate all the interactions and all the time you guys are spending with us. Um, You know, we are in 2022. So we just wish everybody a happy, healthy and safe new year. And, you know, God willing, we'll keep uh, coming back here each and every week to enjoy each other's company. And uh, yeah, man, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into this conversation for BQ. I'm TW. Peace.